Tune on, tune up to 14.313 and you can hear this man talk. <laughs> he is a ham. That audio was taken from a ham. All right. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the After Chat. Real chill, chill place to hang out for the ham radios. We like to just have a little fun, hopefully answer some questions. That's our big thing out here is to meet up with people on the Discord. Link is in the description for this video. If you'd like to uh, if you'd like to join us out there, it's free to join. They do ask you for a cell phone number or a phone number. I don't get that. It's not for me. It's a Discord thing. Um, it is kind of to avoid, at least this is my understanding, it's kind of to avoid some of the bots that they have a problem with. We have not had so many, but servers do get bot rated. And we have an actually pretty big server. We're as far as ham radio goes, we're definitely the largest, but of, of just YouTube people type Discord servers, we actually have a pretty big server we found out. And it's all thanks to the amazing work that all the admins and moderators do on the Discord. So uh, feel free to join us out there. It's a lot of fun and it includes like almost every aspect of our hobby that you'd want to be involved in. So I will do one thing real fast. Yeah. Want to mention, since I've got you all, captivated audience, if you will. <laughs> Go check out our uh, patches that we just posted. Uh, we, we sold a decent chunk of them uh, during the live stream, so thanks everybody who bought a patch. Uh, appreciate you. But if, you, if you're interested in getting an HRC patch, just like this one, sized right for a 511 tactical hat, then go check out the link to in the description to hamtactical.com. All right, we are going to hop right into the after chat right now. Let's talk to some folks. Can't be a dodge, you know. That's How's it going? Cool. Howdy, everybody. What's up? What's up? Hi, Josh. All right. Oh, that was a fun live stream. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Or not. Hey, Josh, man. Also missed you this weekend. I know. We we had a lot going on at home, so I couldn't. we couldn't break away to get down there. Uh, I will give a major shout-out to Adam, though who's in the chat, K6ARK, uh, search and rescue volunteer. There was a story that came out, and there was a lost hiker, and Adam was involved in saving that individual. So, Adam, are you on the mic right now? Yeah, it was uh, kind of a wild day. We got sent out to search Mount Baldy. I mentioned it oh, a few minutes ago, but um, we, uh, our team... We got sent to the top of Baldy and back, 10,000-foot uh, peak here in SoCal with a bunch of snow and ice and stuff. I'll throw some pictures of the day in the, the live chat in a minute. <clears throat> and about a mile or so from uh, returning back to the car after a long day of searching, we heard that some people down in the canyon near where we parked had heard someone yelling for help across the canyon over by the waterfall there. And usually that means a dumb tourist decided to try to scramble up the hillside and get a better view of the falls and got stuck there. So that's uh, what we thought we were going for to, to retrieve was uh, someone that just got stuck on the hillside. We make our way over with some ropes and tech rescue gear just in case we need it. And got up uh, the hillside to the, the person. Little brief exchange back and forth, uh, getting a name and date of birth, and we're like, "Wait a minute, this is this is our guy that's been missing for for three nights out here, and he's alive and well." <laughs> so, gave him some food and water, um, got him into a harness to just kind of help him down the hill, and brought him back down the hill to the waiting vehicles and the ambulance there. So it was a a nice nice ending to that story. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, nicely done for obviously uh, not just, you know, this one person, but you couldn't have gotten to where you're at if it wasn't for all the time you spend training and learning and giving your time to search and rescue. So uh, thanks for everything you do in that space. That's just amazing. Yeah, sure thing. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, KN4MDJ, this is the after chat for the show. Um, you are in the right space. If you'd like to be on voice, then click on live dash stream slash after chat on Discord. Hey, Josh, can I speak up here real fast? Oh, yeah, I'm sitting go for on it. a plane about to go home. 
Go ahead. Hey, Frank. man, we miss you out over at Coach Fest, and uh, congratulations to Adam. That's an amazing story. We miss you also. We understand why you couldn't be there. Adam did a complete kind of stress, on the other hand. We don't know. Um, <laughs> but um, we had a fun time, and I'm about to head back, and we're about to push off from the gate here. Oh, that's it. You guys are heading out. Yeah, that's right, because it, it ends today, right? Yep, ended today, and um, I sat at the airport for a good four, five hours. And I got my Monday's video almost ready to go with the whole Force Press overview. So I'm looking forward to it. It was a blast. It was a blast. And you missed you, man. You would have, you would have had fun out there. Oh, I know I would have, man. I, I, I was uh, very upset that I couldn't make it. I had the truck and everything because this is all kind of predicated on me getting the truck to drive out there. And I've got the truck, and I'm like, why am I not going? But uh, it, it just turned out work was too busy. There's too many things going on for me to break free for that. When'd but... you get your truck? What's that? When'd you get your truck? Uh, first or second week in January. So I've been rolling with it for. <laughs> it's okay. It's it's a lot of fun. I've been having a blast. the The only daunting thing is trying to figure out where I'm going to put all the antennas and radios and stuff. That's actually kind of challenging because it's already it's a huge. I mean, it's a truck, so there's more space than I've ever had before. But at the same time, I've got to figure out like where I'm going to put the little gooseneck for the you know, radio head unit, or do I even want to use a gooseneck? Do I want to do something different? I'm having like analysis paralysis as an engineer right now, trying to figure out what I want to do with all of it. Dude, it I have the like same issue of my truck. Possibilities. Oh yeah. I mean, that's, it's a good problem to have. I'm not complaining, but at the same time, it's so, like, yeah. So where are you plugging the solid state amp in for POTA? That's what I want to know. Oh, you, you're, I told you about this. The, the, the bed in the back has a 240 volt hookup. Oh, okay, okay. So you just okay. you just put the amp in the bed, so, so, open the tailgate, plug that sucker in, and you got you got full legal limit out of the back of the truck. Just just go ahead and invest in a uh, Henry floor standing model, oh, and right. you'll be fine. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, question. Hey, yeah, I'm gonna say seven three, and uh, you'll have a good night. Yeah, buddy. Thanks for hopping on. I appreciate you taking a moment there to say hi. And uh, yeah, safe travels, getting home, and doing what you're doing. Are you with Jason right now, or is he also there with you? Just say hi to him for me. No, he's uh, driving back right now, and uh, what is the Texas doing the long run? I'm taking the plane so I can get back to the office and so can conserve more vacation time to do my home things. Right on. All right. Well, safe travels to you, bud, and uh, we'll we'll catch. Well, well, are you going to Hamcation? Because we're going to catch up in like two weeks. Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. We'll we'll be there. We'll see you. <laughs> Take it easy. Be a yes, yeah. Someone else I know is going to Hamcation, and we'll see. Is Paul? How you doing, Paul? I heard him. I'm doing great. Can't wait to see everybody here. Yeah, it's going to be fun. going to be a blast. Uh, there was a question in the chat. What truck did I get? I got the Ford Lightning F-150. So I have a electric truck. <laughs> so it's... I'm just saying, Josh, you bring it to Louisiana, and I'll break out the hole saws and help you with an insulation. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not drilling holes, man. I'm not drilling holes. I already bought the... Uh, the diesel power rear ta uh, rear brake light top of the F-150 mount that is – I basically had to sell a kidney for an antenna mount. I'll pull the, the website yep. up in a second. That thing is no – They're they're proud of those. They are. They got to be because they are charging an arm and a leg for that damn thing. Uh, but that's what I went with. I went with the single. So the VHF is going to be on that. I'll probably put up an APRS antenna. And then my big issue is figuring out how to – put up a screwdriver or HF antenna and run it along the bed and get it into the cab. That's my current uh, thing that I'm dealing when, with. PM um, when you're ready, I'll give you a couple ideas. Okay. Cool. Is the, is, is the bed separate from the cab? Yeah. It's a, it's bed and, oh. and truck on frame. Okay. The, it's an F-150 oh, for all intents and purposes. You, you should be able to run the, the coax along the frame and find a grommet in the, it, it, under the carpet, come but up it, through the, uh, yeah, it's getting it's getting the coax to the frame line, running it along, and then. I, by the way, uh, it, it is an F. You have good drill. You have good drill bits. I don't want to drill anything if I don't have to. Because okay. Oh come on! You you live in California. It's not like it's gonna rust. I I know I know, but hear me out. So the F one fifty's got access holes like everywhere. It's just a a matter of doing it in like the cleanest way is what I, I want to try and aim for here. So that's what I'm yeah, aiming for. There's there there's holes all over the place for that thing. There, there's no problem. Yeah. What's your range? Uh, three hundred miles about. Damn, nice. 
Yeah. Way better than your leaf. Oh, yeah. I, anything is above my my leaf, which I've been living with since 2017. So I'm mm-hmm. I am the I am the perfect person for an electric vehicle. I've already been dealing with like 60 miles top uh, on a full charge. So I I am I'm fully vetted in in dealing with electric vehicles. It's just now like, that I have 300 miles. It's like, what do I do with all these miles? <laughs> it's w- now, do you get rid of the leaf? I'm gonna sell it. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 about now, ready to get can, gutted and sold. Can you make it down to? Is that enough range to make it to Adams and back without oh. charging? Oh yeah, no problem. Okay, no problem. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Ed asks Atos. So I already have the Atos. And while that's probably the direction I want to go, I was thinking about going with a different uh, HF radio. So that's, yeah. David, thank you for uh, joining the member uh, for membership on YouTube. Thanks so much. Uh, appreciate it. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're going to switch from the 891 to something else? Yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking about, well, okay, I, I have the 857, which, you know, does the job of the 891. Uh, um, yeah, uh, yeah, um, okay. But. Um, the 891 has been just living its whole life in, in the leaf, which would be nice if we, you know, if I could take it out and actually use it portable again, I was thinking about a 7,100. That's what I was thinking. Um, but. I, I'm, I'm going to say, uh, HRA, you know, we, we, we are kind of a portable radio group and we're pretty much evenly split between the 891 and the 7,100. Yeah. The 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 seventy one hundred is a really nice radio that it, it, it works well. It's a nice nice radio. Um, the Craig had one portable in his Jeep with ham sticks, and Mike and I used that and got all over the country while driving down driving around the uh, Washington. So I, I can support you going to uh, that. Other than it's a uh, other than it's an ICOM radio. Yeah, why well, decide? Just do what I did. Get them both. <laughs> Well, he's not going to get rid of the 891. <laughs> yeah, so uh, gonna... for instance, let me for those watching on uh, YouTube. So this is inside the the truck. There's a Instagram post that I posted. I don't know, like a, uh, last night. So there's there's a, a desk space. Like the the armrest folds down into a desk. And one of the reasons I was thinking about the 7100 is that it has that just single USB plug-in like you have on a 7300. So I'll be able to do digital modes like really, really easily if I, mm. if I go that route. Whereas the 891 yeah, I, I, is not very good. It's yeah, not as convenient. So, so, what, so what you're telling me is you're going to be doing digital modes while driving to work and traffic? No, 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 no. No. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm seeing, Josh? What's that? They have some nice laptop it's, mount. It's time to get a flex, man. You get one of those... Um, those lock picks for the t- uh, touch screen, and you can just, you know, HDMI straight into that big old nice touch screen. There you go. Oh, there's no way I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> I mean, that would be something down the line when they figure out how to hack that with like an HDMI port or whatever. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, they do. They have uh, for the for the Fords and most major, like the big three trucks, they have a piece that you just put in the back and you don't have to solder or nothing. It's just a plug and play harness that allows you to uh, bring in inputs and outputs. Oh, to tap into the screen? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's yeah, that's an interesting thought. Actually, though, uh, this is a good transition point. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the potential radio recession going on. Um, and I mentioned the 7100 because it's it's been hard to find them in stock. I, I saw a couple that were at HRO. They sold instantly, and they're marked as uh, not available. Gigaparts doesn't have them. DX Engineering doesn't have them. But guess what? Also, the 891 is showing is out of stock at Gigaparts, along with a series of handhelds. And we know that we just went into the world, the post 818 slash FTM 400, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago, the, the ceasing of production of that radio. So the topic of this after chat, which is different, I, I I switched it from just talking about the radio merit badge, which we can talk about that when we get to it. Uh, I still have an intro to the whole after chat for the newcomers, but uh, we're going to talk a little bit about a potential radio recession, and I don't mean necessarily that there's less people interested in radio. I think we have the opposite case, but if we have depressed access to radios because of supply and obvious price hikes, which we've seen. 
I find that to be kind of an interesting position to be in. So we'll be talking about that later. So if you're in it with the long haul with us, we go for a couple of hours on the after chat. So buckle in. But I do want to take this opportunity. Usually how we start the after chat is to say hi to everybody who's joined us for the first time and to answer their questions. So if you're here on the Discord after chat for the first time and you have a ham radio question, or you just like to say hi, like you're checking into a net, uh, come now. We do PTT buttons out here. So if you've got that PTT button set up in Discord, just hold that down and say hello, introduce yourself, and ask your question if you got it. Anybody here for the first time like to say hi or ask a question? Go ahead. I'll say hi, Josh. Uh, this is my first time. This is KB3HCT. Hey, how's it going? What have you been up to with Ham Radio? Uh, actually, I was on uh, one of your questions on a uh, podcast this week. I uh, haven't done a lot, but the, all the 10-meter talk has got me uh, looking at that. Yeah. All right. I'm, well, one congratulations. Uh, HF for technicians is gonna is has already been awesome. I've been listening to ten meters for most of today, and there was uh, I made contacts to Eastern Russia on FT8, and uh, I think I made a contact in New Zealand and a bunch of stateside contacts on the back of my beam. Uh, ten meters has just been outstanding. So. Yeah, no, well, appreciate it. Thanks for uh, joining us out here. Yeah, yeah, I was the one with the uh, the soda activation thought for uh, Philmont. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So let let's just talk about that right now since we're we're okay. here. Um, I would love to do that. I think we I think I mentioned that on the show, yeah. and I hope Adam's listening too. So Philmont is a very large scout camp, and we're thinking potentially for Jamboree on the air doing something if we can get approval to go out there with with the appropriate people that make the decisions that we could possibly do like a soda activation or some kind of thing where we have like a bunch of people that hike out with us like a bunch of scouts and other people i would i'm totally down i'm 100 percent in so if you could spearhead a little bit of that that would be great uh let me know how i can help uh this would great idea fantastic idea you yeah have. Yeah, yeah, I probably didn't put it well in my email. I was really trying to just bounce it off, I think. But, uh, yeah, for, for those that don't know, uh, Film on Scout Ranch, it's about, what is it? It's 140 square miles of land in New it's Mexico. It's huge, yeah. Yeah, it's in, it, it's, 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 it's in uh, you know, it's like 150,000 acres, I think, is what it comes out to or something like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, quite a few uh, mountain peaks that you can pick from there. Yeah, yeah. Uh... Do you know if there's soda summits there? I'm assuming there are. Oh, I looked up a little bit. Uh, there's a couple that have some activations, like three or four activations, and they're all in the summer, of course. Somebody that was a ham was on a trek uh, in the summer with, like, a, you know, one of the standard, their standard uh, treks that thought to go too dark on a rabbit hole, but for everybody who's, it's like about 20,000 people will backpack there in the summer through scouts uh, and cruise of like about 10 people typically. It's yeah. kind of an average size out for about seven or 12 days and they cover anywhere from 50 to 100 miles, depending on what route they take and uh, plans and everything. But in the, in the fall, they have what they call, Josh, what they call autumn adventure, where you can take like all adult crews and yes. uh, you don't have to take youth and everything. And so that's where this would fit in well with Jamboree on the air is it's kind of a choose your own adventure type situation for that. Oh, okay. So, I see so where you you're can, going. You can do it like they, their end there would be pretty like you're like, hey, we want to come backpacking or we come hiking. Uh, some people even just do like uh, set up one place and uh, like hike a short day, like two miles in, set up camp, a base camp and then like side hike for a couple days. Uh, so depending on, you know, the whole there's a lot of scenarios. But if you got a group, if we got a group of people that were interested, like that would be there. There's a lot of options uh obviously on kind of it's kind of an open book uh, there's a couple there's obviously some rules and they send a staff member with you is the is the right. deal yeah that way they're covered on that end but but it's pretty open-ended uh so I, i'm 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 totally down i i'm i'm already i i have a my boss's boss has done the multi-day film i film filmont loop the, yeah. the whole thing i think it takes like yeah. over a week to do it it, yeah, that's the track. Yep, they call it like a track. Yeah, yeah, there's like 40 different ways you can do it, but yeah. He he put the bug in my head about that, and then when you sent the email to the podcast, I was like, oh, this is such a good idea. 
Yeah, th- I'm I'm totally down to whatever we can figure out what to do. It would yeah. be nice it would be Jamboree, but Jamboree's probably hopping with people, so that might not be the best way to do it. You you're, you said this is autumn time frame? Well, Jamboree on the air is August. Is no, that's that's October. So oh, so what's August then? Did I miss the date? That's just the jam- that's just like normal Jamboree is in August. Got it, got it. Like, yeah. like if they have a that's actually this coming year there's a national jamboree for for scouting in West Virginia but jamboree on the air I don't know if you've ever done anything with that or not but uh, that's it's ham ra- jamboree on ham radio basically in October okay yeah so, that's a good time to hike in New Mexico it's not too hot. yeah it's not too cold um, yep yeah I'm, yeah I'm, I don't know like I said I'm 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 down I oh. let, let's uh. Maybe take it to the DMs and let's yeah, chat a little yeah, bit about it. Get off on that, yeah. And I don't know if anybody else on here's ever done uh, jamboree on the air, but it ties in well with your 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 uh, the live stream tonight. Oh yeah, completely. And and again, I I cannot understate this enough that that little ham radio mirror patch is a fantastic little book. Even if you're not a scout, like pick that thing up and um, flip through it. There's actually like some pretty good info if you're a new ham. I'm thinking like to myself. If you're if you just got your technician license and you you don't know like let's say you just memorized all the questions nobody does that right um it, 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 Gordon West books great for this but th- that merit badge book is like really thin and it covers a lot of details really really quickly so I I just I, I cannot recommend it enough and they're super cheap merit badge books are super cheap yeah they're that's actually true of the entire series for anybody like if there's a topic that's there and you are interested in it it's a great condensed little like cliff notes version because it, it is it really is the, the cost of them is basically to cover the printing because uh boy scouts basically takes care of all it's almost all volunteer authors and stuff that write them so yep. that's why they're so inexpensive yeah yeah big advocate of that as a as a former scout i guess you're a scout for life they, they tell you but um yeah highly recommended Okay. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, thank you for saying hi there. Uh, anyone else, first time, like to say hi or ask a question? This is the time. We want to answer your ham radio questions if you got them and solve any of your problems. So come now. I'll say hello just for a quick one. Uh, Nathan here uh, in the Falkland Islands. I've been watching your videos for a while and uh, thought I'd actually subscribe for a bit. Hey, thank you. Appreciate that. In the Falklands, right on. Uh, what was I just learning about the Falklands in radio recently? Oh, I can't remember now, but uh, there was... Uh, we had the, the Bouvet guys come through here, uh, and um, they, they sort of did off their trip for Freeway OJ, came through the Falklands, we all met up with the guys when they was uh, on their way down to uh, go and do the uh, activation down there for the expedition. It was it was uh, that, uh, it was I heard about that, but there was something historic that I can't remember about the Falklands being um, pretty important to, to radio, and I can't remember what it was. It'll probably come to me in a little bit. But, well, thank you for joining us, and, and thank you for subscribing. I appreciate that. And cheers. Yeah, no worries. All right. Anybody else in there with, uh, would like to say hi? You don't have to ask a question, but if you have a question for Ham Radio, we'd love to take it and answer your questions. Go ahead. I got to figure out a way to revive the questions for new hams. We uh, maybe everybody, maybe our videos are just working that well, and just, everybody's getting you know what they need to be effective on the radio, which is you know that's winning as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, hey, Mike's, Mike's getting them all on the air. Uh, that's it, uh, Dustin. Did you say you have a question? Yeah. Um, so I've been doing quite a bit of research here the last couple of days on antennas in the attic. Okay. And uh, specifically VHF, UHF antennas and like the effects of that specifically, because I know it operates differently and it uh, propagates differently than HF, but everything I can find is pretty much HF related and nothing for VHF, UHF. And uh, that just seems like a better option for me uh, personally with uh, the way I like to keep my house. So the the issue you have with VHF UHF is that it's fairly susceptible to absorption from the roof basically above the antenna and uh, a big issue do you have a radiant barrier on your roof between the shingles and the plywood negative okay so good for you I mean good and bad it's good to have a radiant barrier for insulation but um, radiant barrier just kills RF so okay good we can work with that how tall is your attic from like floor to, to roof, basically? 
depending on the spot, like 10 feet. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, you can you can work all kinds of stuff with that. So what you generally want to look for is a um, a ground plane antenna or a what am I? What's the uh, I'm trying Talking to about one of those J poles. You, you can do a J pole, but you would the what's the diamond? Everybody in the chat will tell me in a second. Diamond or comment that has the little spikes on the bottom for the ground plane that they run from five feet up to fifteen feet, and they're usually segmented. Everybody's running these. I have the MFJ version, which is called the Pulsar. I don't know that they make them anymore. Um, I, I'm gonna get to disco, and don't worry, Matt. I'm gonna I'm, or yeah, Matt. I'm gonna get to it. The X50? Yeah, okay, let's pull that up. Hold on. Yeah, this is... Okay, so let's uh, let's throw things over. Thanks for subscribing, too. Appreciate that for everybody that just did. All right, let's uh, go over to the web here. So the Diamond X30, uh, this is a $72 antenna, $73. It'll do 2 meters, 70 centimeter. It's 4.2 five feet tall so you can easily uh put this in your attic without any problem this is probably what you want to do and they have varieties that go up to 10 feet and then three uh 15 feet this is a really good antenna uh, you can put this outside your house you can put this in the attic if you want to but it obviously works better if it's outside you know i think i think you know that but you're you're playing with uh with attic antennas I will drop the link um, on the YouTube side and the Discord just so people can follow along with what I'm posting. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, it double linked me. Anyway, so uh, that's what I, I would do uh, if, if you're in an attic. That, that'd be fine. Now, there was another comment that was made about a discone antenna. A uh, discone antenna would be really, really good if you had a radio that was uh, open for receiving outside of the ham bands. That would be a, a cool option as well, because then you could, you know, use the radio to listen to all kinds of stuff, all kinds of signals. So that's another option too. The uh, advantage of a disco is that you could use it for things like a scanner, and they they work really, really well for scanners, particularly in the higher frequencies. But that's also going to be um, negatively affected by the roof. There will be some absorption there for both receive and transmit. So just keep that in mind. Gotcha. Damn that roof. Why can't you put it outside? Is it because of an HOA? Um, we have we we live in the middle of the city with uh, chickens in our backyard, and that already draws enough attention. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't want to risk it for the biscuit with the uh, the antenna. The, you, the chickens are easy enough to move around and hide, but the antenna is less so. So hear me out on this. I would argue that putting a uh, VHF UA, like this is a five foot antenna. If you put that on the low side of your built, like your home, on the the back side of the house where maybe not a lot of people would be looking, they blend in pretty well because it's all white. It's just a white. It looks like a PVC pole that's just kind of sticking up in the back. They blend in really well, and arguably, even at the low side of your roof line, it's going to perform better than it being in the attic. So if you can swing it, I highly recommend you put it outside if you can. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I've been also exploring those. I just was trying to get more information on the attic stuff and just really couldn't find it for VHF, UHF stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know what, you know, why I think that is, is I think just a lot of people are just like, yeah, I just, I just threw it up in there and I got on with it. Like that's, you know, what, what about it? Yeah. Somebody said a slim gym, but what about a slim gym and a tree in the backyard? Do you have any trees? Uh, no, my, my neighbor does my backyard neighbor, but he's a good 50 yards away from me. At least. I was going to say, are you friends with him? Would he let you put an antenna up in the tree? <laughs> you know, I could probably run, you know, four or 500 feet of coax to his old antenna. He's not, you don't want to do that. Okay. So I'll, I'll just step in and say, um, anything like over a hundred feet on VHF, UHF, you're going to get considerable power line loss via the, the feed line on, on power. So yeah, I would sure. not recommend that. Um, so, you know, you can, you could probably leave that one alone. I think it was, uh, who posted that? It was Jody, Jody, uh, the disco and antenna in the attic. Got it right there. So that's another option. These are great for scanners. I, I do high, I, I actually think that it's okay to put an antenna in the attic for a scanner. If you, if you wanted to play around with scatter, uh, scanners, disco fine. I have mine up like 
10 feet above the roof line though, which does make it, you know, here really, really well. Um, but yeah, that, that's an option for you. I've, I've got two options that come to mind. Yeah, go for it. Um, uh, look into the flower pot antennas. They're so low to the <clears> ground <throat> though. I I'm with you, but I mean, if he's in our city, you know, yeah. Flower or... pot. Uh, what do they call those? The, uh, count, uh, obfuscated uh, camouflaged antennas yeah mm -hmm. uh, actually though the j-pole you could run that up a trellis like a plant trellis and it would kind of disappear really easily those are really easy to hide too if you wanted to mm -hmm. go that route i know that be my that, shepherd's hook for the bird feeders the the good thing about the uh the ed fong once you encapsulate it in the pvc it kind of blends in with the rest of your house if you put it on your roof it just looks like a you know one of the uh drain yeah, they do uh, use a lot of yeah. PVC up there now. Yeah. Right. Uh, but my other recommendation is if you make a, a quarter wave ground plane, mm -hmm. just a very simple one, uh, they work really well. Uh, I ran one up until a couple of years ago when the hurricane came through, and you couldn't even tell. Like, you could tell the coax was there more than the antenna was there. Gotcha. Now, ground planes, I haven't looked into these at all. Do they... Do they have to sit on the ground, or can they no. go? The ground, no, in ground fact, plane. You, you want them high up, as high as you can get them, basically. Yeah, yeah that, that Diamond X50 is actually kind of a ground plane. Ground ground plane, basically, meaning that it, it, it you make your own ground plane for the antenna to use versus um, like having one mounted on the top of your truck where it's using the, the top of the roof, the metal on the roof as a ground plane for the antenna. Gotcha, um, yeah. I basically built the uh, was it KV9 VBR uh, had a video on how to build one, and that's uh, I hauled it around with me for a while. Yeah, KV9 VBR is a YouTuber too, so he's got jpol.com, I believe, is his website. Right? Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of his stuff. Yeah, while researching. So I think the reason why a lot of the like there's not a lot of information on the web about like putting VHF UHF in an attic is people just do it. They just buy whatever they have and then they just put it up there. Because to be honest, it's like it's kind of a no fuss, no muss antenna. You just put it up there and go to, go to work. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't, right? So all of this is always going to come back to like whatever you try, right? I would I would give the nod to that comment I just pulled up. Um, but, um, or diamond to, they both make very similar antennas and they're both going to work really well. The thing is, is like, once you try it and if you don't like how you're getting out, then that's when I would like, you know what, just, just put it, hide it somewhere in the backyard on the roof. You know, nobody's going to really complain. I, I really don't think it's, it's that much to worry about. And then you mentioned chickens. The price of eggs is now to the point where like, I think your neighbors would be they, they're nobody's gonna worry about that. Like you, they. Yeah, I could probably buy it. them off with yeah, half a dozen or so. Yeah, seriously, seriously, probably, probably. Like there's, I, I think we're at the point now. Like if you're not in an HOA, I think most people are just turning a blind eye to like what a lot of people are doing. As long as you're not being dangerous or hurting anybody, like yeah, nobody's nobody's getting that fussy about it. Yeah, appreciate it, yeah. man. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the question. We did get a question. There's a, oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And then we'll we'll take this oh, question. We got it. There's a uh there's a guy, W six NBC. He has some really good, like different antenna designs. He does a lot of stuff with slots and some like some folded up things that actually perform pretty good mm -hmm. that uh, are very easily hideable. Uh, it's W six NBC. He's got some articles online. You just search his call sign and he does some weird stuff. Even HF slot skeleton antenna thing. Oh, kind of weird stuff, but it's some pretty cool antennas that you can hide. Really? Okay. That's kind of cool. Yeah, he came and did a presentation for our club. He's a really good talker. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So you, you liked his antennas? Yeah. I mean, he goes into great detail about how the slot antenna actually works. They use a lot of those in uh, AM broadcasting and stuff, and then he's... He's worked with the design for quite a few years. He he goes over the whole, his whole uh, philosophy of de de dealing with the uh, slot antennas to the point that uh, he's got a uh, high performing 
slot antenna in his backyard now as his own his main uh, antenna, and it's it looks really easy to build. Yeah, uh, and there was a a long time ago I did a video uh, about the plans that you could. So you can take a, a direct TV satellite dish and you can carve a horizontal line in it, and it'll actually function as a slot antenna, which is pretty pretty damn yeah. cool. Um, that's totally something you can do, which is which is super awesome. So yeah, that, that's a thing that's if you look that up, direct TV slot antenna, and and you'll find it on Google. So yeah, somebody uh, Jody just posted it. Oh yeah, J- Jody already know J- Jody's fast with the link, so thank you, Jody. I didn't even notice that, but of course, Jody had it. <laughs> so uh, there's a, a chat question on the YouTube. So ham radio question, HF for $400, Shagu G90. Probably, probably the G90 is going to be where you want to be. Um, I I would give the nod to an 817, uh, Yesu 817 or 818 if you buy used. Right now, the, the intensity of, of people buying the 818s is kind of through the roof. The the reason why I've I'm kind of I've been saying the the G ninety for a long time now. I, I've recently heard from a retailer that some of the Shegu radios have had quality issues. And I, I don't have any numbers to back that up other than I it's more than the Yesu eight seventeen slash eight eighteen. So if I was you, we're we're kind of heading into the big ham fest uh territory right now i would try and buy a good used ham radio from one of the japanese companies right now if i were you and that may dovetail into the conversation about the ham radio recession that we may be coming into here in 2023 uh used might look real good here in the future with that said i've had no issues with my g90 i don't uh beat on it as much as my other radios because it's it's kind of relegated to the emp trash can but uh yeah hopefully that gives you some food for thought to consider all right i have a question yeah i'd love to hear it go for it so um i recently bought a k6 ark uh kit well Um, he's here i don't know if you knew that he's here right now I, uh, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> he is. Maybe, maybe he's, uh, away from keyboard. He'll be, yeah, uh, we'll see if he comes back. No, he's here. He, I'm he unmuted. I'm listening. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I sent you an email about, uh, 10 minutes ago. Essentially, I put my tolerate on the wrong side of the PCB. You son of a bitch. Uh, no. I know. I was so, <laughs> I was kidding, like, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I feel like I was doing so well. I was like, man, because I, this is like my first time soldering. And so, like, I felt like I was cooking on fire. And I like got everything on, put the heat shrink on. Yeah. And I was oh, like, no. man, this is weird. The the antenna wires are pointing down oh, and no. his are pointing up. And then I realized that I put the toy on the wrong side. And, and I was curious if I'm SOL or if I need to order some more parts from you. No, no worries, man. Um, I'll send you some spare parts. The the stuff you need to to fix it is is all the the easy stuff to ship in just a flat envelope. So, um, so I'll get some, some stuff out to you. Um, send me one more email. I, I did see your message, and I have a, a little bit of a backlog right now of emails to catch up on. But um, send me one more email there with your address, and I'll get uh, some spare parts out to you. Not a big deal. Hey, thanks, Ben. I appreciate it. Sure thing. That is the type of service you get with uh, K6 Air K antennas. Let's just say that right now. So. Yeah, that's customer service right there, boys. I'll that tell you is, what. I, that's, I mean, okay. I, I, I'll, I'll just say, Adam, search and rescue volunteer, full time job where he's got people that that need him when he's at work, and then also just an absolute luminary in antennas and three D printing and all the other things he does. So, uh, I will speak on his behalf. I know he's a humble man, but just thank you, Adam. You do a lot of great stuff. So. And, and some of the smallest way. radios you'll ever find. Some of the smallest radios a man can make. <laughs> That's true. Ain't that the, the truth? When it comes to uh, small radios, let me tell you. Yeah, absolutely. Adam's the best. All right. Um, it's not the size. It's how you use it. That's right. 
it, well, CW is how you use it. <laughs> That's how you use it. All right. Anybody else in the Discord like to say hi or ask a question? Go ahead. I got a question. Go for it. Love to hear it. So uh, seeing as the MobiLink is basically unobtainium, uh, I didn't want to uh, buy a DigiRig. Uh, wait, there are we 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 think the website's telling us that they'll be in stock next month. I'm not going to hold my breath. Oh well, let's <laughs> okay. Keep talking. I'm going to pull up the website where you talk. So uh, I was just wondering if you or anybody in the Discord has uh, DIY'd a cable for an FT three DR um, to go to a USB sound card to do like VAR FM with it instead of buying like a digi rig. It seems kind of hard to find info on it online. I've been Googling around for a little bit now and haven't found a like a nice uh, all-in-one like blog post or something that actually talks about somebody doing that. Um, okay, so first Super Chat. Thanks so much from Bill Tanner. That's it. K6ARK is getting an order now, heading to his site. He's also on Amazon. If you go to K6ARK, Google him, and then uh, it'll link to his Amazon page. So, yeah, but good. He deserves the problem. it. problem... The problem is, is it's a lot of that stuff sold out right now. <laughs> One thing I'm very good at in life is trying to do far too many things. Yes. And, uh, yes. and I've not been keeping up on uh, antenna kit stock. So my apologies for that. Uh, yeah, I hear that. All right. So I'm on the, the TNC page right now, and I'll, I'll shrink myself down a little bit here. So you can see this. It says sold out. We'll be back in potentially March. I, I swear that said February, like a couple of weeks ago. Um, okay, so what was the interface again? You don't want to get a digi rig. Why, why not a digi rig? Well, first, what's the interface you're talking about? And then why not a digi rig? Oh, I just, I had a USB sound card already and I was more interested in trying to DIY it as opposed to just getting the, the digi rig. What was the interface you were talking about? Oh, um, it was to an FT three DR, so I believe that's a tip ring ring sleeve style uh, oh, oh, three point five oh. millimeter connector. But it's it's not a standard. It's Yesu's custom. Their their pinout for the tip ring ring sleeve, I don't think, is like a common one. Um. So they make that CT forty four adapter. Um. Okay. So since you already have a USB sound card. You're just trying to get audio in and out in PTT, right? Yes, exactly. So just build the cable then. Just go buy an aux cable that's tip ring ring sleeve and just wire it up the way it needs to be. You that I mean? is exactly what I'm looking for here. <laughs> I was wondering if anybody had like a schematic for what that needs to look like exactly. Oh, I don't know. I Actually, Jody will probably find the link before any of us, but... um. So you would have to look up what the what the the diagram is for that, and then you would have to correlate that to. So the problem you're going to run into is that your um, your USB sound card is not going to probably be tip ring ring sleeve, so it's probably not going to have the PTT connection. Uh, it could. I I actually don't know. It's probably split, so you would probably need a splitter. You'd probably need a wide yeah, cable. Yeah, it's split. I was yeah. expecting to to split it out. Uh oh. So Jody, sorry, sorry, Jody. I'll catch you up. So he's trying to interface a FT five D. Was that what you said? FT five D. FT three. Same three, thing. But okay. the same yeah. thing. FT three D to his USB sound card. So it would be uh, mic and audio in for speaker. Other other way around, flipped, but but um, it would have to be a Y cable. So, by the way, audio Y cables exist, but I don't know if an audio Y cable exists that's tip ring ring sleeve. I don't think so either. I, I thought I was going to have to split it to two mono cables um, and I've done buy that. Yesu's DT forty four. Yeah, but I've done that. Was... Oh oh, that's right. They do make the DT forty four. Um, yes, I, I've done that. In fact, I think I have that cable set over there. That does work. And I've used that for the, um, the connection for doing wires X to a laptop. The, their connection kit, by the way, so here, <laughs> here's kind of the messed up thing. If you go buy their like cable setup, it costs more than just buying a digi rig. <laughs> if you just do the digi rig, you're done. 
find you're selling me on? No, I mean, it, it's 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 stupid. I, I'm not I, I, I'm not um, you're not wrong. Right. You're not wrong in where you're coming from. But unless you're going to, like, get down and just start building all the cables yourself, you're, you're ultimately going to fly right in the face of, like, I got to buy the Yesu dongle or I've got to go get a digi rig or something like that. Got it. One, I guess one option. you'll be spending more of my money. I don't have the button, but let me spend your money. One option, if you want to mess around with, uh, like, a CM108, those little sound cards that look like a PCB board, um, sound cards on, uh, like, USB is actually, like, just... It doesn't oh, yeah. have a housing, basically. Yeah, no, uh, no you can You that. can make, like... Oh, you too? Okay. Well, I mean, as far as that, if you've modified it, like, the way you would if you were doing it for an all-star note or something, you should just be able to just take a... I think in the manual... I don't want to sound like that guy, but I think in the manual, it actually shows you the pinout. It, it what I normally do is, and it'll show you the pinout for the TRRS, and then you can just take your multimeter on, because uh, whatever cable you get, the, the wire colors are not going to be standard. Uh, or the, sometimes they are, but sometimes they're not, because they're Chinese cables off of Amazon. But um, a lot of times you just take your uh, multimeter and just check or uh, figure out which one goes to what color. And then, then you'll know how to wire it up, uh, like using the continuity feature on a multimeter. If, if you have one, I'm sure you probably. Do. Yeah, no, I, I, I think so. Honestly, the USB sound card is the easiest trip on this whole this whole journey. Uh, that's not a big deal. It's the it, it's this thing that Jody's posting because what you got to do, and and this is the wrong radio, but um, the the FT3 has a single audio port that is tip ring ring sleeve. And you need to Y that out. And Yesu sells a, a Y connector that you then put two audio cables, audio jacks into. And then you would then take those audio jacks and go into a USB sound card because you, you have to do the audio in and audio out split. But then you also need the capability to PTT. The, the reason why the DigiRig is so nice is that it, it gets rid of all this extra cabling that you have to do. And it goes from... Um, the single plug, the tip ring ring sleeve into the digi rig, and then outbound is a USB C to USB A connection to a to a laptop or or whatever. So that's that's kind of how they get you, right? Is that you know you you, you reduce I, the amount of crap you have to have. I I have a question. Yeah, go for it. Would it just be easy to find like one of those Chinese hand mics that plug into the FT three D R, dissect it to figure out what goes where and then convert that into oh uh, yeah a, a way to i mean because I, I found the mics as low as like 10 bucks but the the problem is that you have to split it and you have to then like heat shrink two sets of cables and break apart you know a bunch of stuff like that's it it, it becomes a question of like what's your time's worth what is your time worth if your time is worth buying a digi rig and just being done with it like okay go ahead if you're doing it like for the fun of it for the hobby for learning absolutely go nuts i've i've definitely sat down with a breadboard and i've soldered on leads to wires and and plugged them into the breadboard and played all the games literally just tapped out the right connections for an audio cable and then once i had it all tapped out then i soldered them all together you could actually print a pcb you could you could do this online to make a little PCB to do this and and uh, my biggest example of that was for the Kenwood D seventy two when I wanted to play around with satellites and I wanted an inline connection for uh, doing an audio recorder. You know I did the whole PCB with a little resistor on there and all that stuff and and yeah you can absolutely do that you know it's a little project board to figure it out and then you can proto board it out and do all that fun stuff but this is like a if you don't want to go down that road, then you can just buy the digi rig and you're done. So MFJ stopped making those cables. Did they? Jeez, they no. They sell the they, they sell the connection. Well, so what they probably do is that it's a part of the connection kit. It's it, it's probably not a CT44 that you can buy. It's probably like the the uh, Wires X connection kit that's part of a bunch of other stuff you get. Is, is oh, he's just stuff. trying to go from the audio in and audio out and that and, and trigger the push to talk, right? Right. And so he's yes, trying to go the from plan. the USB sound card, which is a two plug connector, right. to the radio, which is a single tip ring ring sleeve. 
I'll Thank take a moment. Sand, uh, Sand Hill, Sand Hill. Thank you for the super chat. I didn't get to say it earlier, but it's been up there for a little while. So thank you for the support. I appreciate it. All right. Well, I think we gave you a ton of options. If you want to play around, go nuts. You can. Uh, I would. By the way, if if anybody, if there's like a ham radio thing that I would add to the list, it's like go buy yourself a little proto. Uh, sorry, a breadboard, and then a couple of proto boards. And you'd be surprised. You can just hog out a little proto board real easy for the wires that you need to tap in based off of what you've built on a breadboard. I've used it for audio cables in the past, and I just take heat shrink over the top of it and just suck it, you know, heat, hit it with a gun and hit it with that Harbor Freight heat gun, and then you're all set. <laughs> all right. Uh, anybody else in there with uh, questions or would like to say hi? on uh, the Discord or the YouTubes. We're also taking the questions over there. We also see your comments from Twitch, so keep them all coming in. If you got a question, we'd love to take it. I would like to say hello and give an update if I could. Yeah, go for it. Um, I called in a few weeks ago. I just gotten my technician license and I wanted a radio I could fit in a rucksack. Mm -hmm. And y'all recommended a uh, a G90, which I got, and I think it was Jeff told me about how to make a speaker wire antenna, mm -hmm. and uh, I got that up and running and made a contact today on 20 watts that was like 5,000 miles away. Where, where, who's your contact? What was the, what country? Uh, from Nashville, Tennessee to Chile. <laughs> nice, Good man. job. Was that on 10 meters? 10 meters, 2.8442. Yep. I, I, I feel like I feel like when someone tells me it's a South American contact, it's like 75% chance it's on 10 meters. So good for you, man. That's fantastic. That's awesome. So feeling pretty good? You feeling pretty good about that choice that you made on that radio? Oh, I am hooked. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I'm trying That's to awesome. I'm studying for my general now and I'm trying to figure out I have like a second story back porch patio mm -hmm. and, and i can put up a fishing pole and run a uh, wire all the way to the ground from the second story there so it's like go. i think that might be a half meter half wavelength 80 meter antenna i can run oh so, cool yeah nice. I'm thinking of, so yeah with a with a half wavelength 80 meter antenna you put a 49 to 1 on 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 that and you you do you'd get multi-band capability out of that you get 80 40 20 15 well, Adam will correct me. And 10, right? Adam, am I right? Somewhere in there? Is it 12 and 10? You might. Uh, Eight, you get part of 12. Yeah, with, with, with 80, you, you pretty much, uh, sometimes it takes a little tweaking, but you can get just about all the, the higher bands. So you, you get pretty much everything in there on, a, on an 80 meter and fed half wave. With a 40 meter, you'll get 40, 20, 15, and 10. Even sixty? No, uh, not sixty. Oh no, you won't get sixty. It never works. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you do often get like seventeen and twelve and fifteen. Yeah, and I might well. my my end fed. Of course, I've got the you know full length eighty meter, but I, I get I get all the HF bands except for sixty. So I don't get six meters. I know some people using one of those can get six meters, but I I won't do six. God, you sounded like you were hurt by six at one point. Why did you say you won't do six? What, just no, it won't. It won't. Oh, it do won't six. do six. Okay, well, I have. I won't I have do six. To I, it, it, it hurt me one time. Six, six I, meters. Six <laughs> meters kicked my dog. Too, too early for me to go that way. No, six Show meters. me on the band plan. Oh, where it hurts. Hurt you. Yeah, I know. That's yes, what I was thinking. No, I, I already have. I, I've got a a, funny. a GP fifteen. So that'll okay. be six meters. And then I've also got the, um, oh, what is it, the HF6B that's got the six meter kit on it. So I, I, I've got two antennas that'll do six. I usually use the GP15. I actually have a, a, a diplexer <laughs> to, that I have hooked up to my 897 that goes out. So I can use the VHF, UHF, and the six meter on it. Nice. That's very cool. All right. We got any other questions in there? Anybody wants to say hi or anything? Go ahead. 
Uh, otherwise, we're going to start moving along with the show because I got a topic I want to talk about. I did have a question about the gateway computer you were recommending. Oh, yeah. I can actually go grab that. We might want to talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, go for it. So I picked one up off of Amazon the other day, and it just showed up tonight. And I specifically ordered the uh, Windows 10 because I've got one of the Evolves and everything else has Windows 10. Mm -hmm. um, and a Windows 11 computer showed up. Is there any reason I should send that back and get it swapped out, or is that um, – I haven't – I know I know people have a lot of really strong feelings about Windows 11 versus Windows 10, but this is like uh, if you're using it for ham radio, it's it's not that big a deal. It's it's yeah. really not. <clears throat> I, uh, I've, got a, I've got a comment on that. I, I know we're all hams and we all have strong opinions, but so yeah, go ahead, go ahead with the thoughts. Go ahead in the chat. Uh, I was just gonna say, take a, a Windows 10 USB stick and just install Windows 10 and dual boot it. And you just don't even worry about activating it. Yeah, but like, are you actually like, do you have problems using Is Windows 11? Have any problems with 11 on mine? I I've had no problems with it. I I've got all kinds of stuff. I got M1 on MM sitting up here and HRD installed and uh, FT8 it, works fine. Everything it's does a, fine. It's a lot. It's a lot less of a change. And like say Mac OS did with the M1 series and stuff. All it is is really Windows 10 with a new UI is how I feel it runs everything. The, the M1s didn't change the OS series. Like, no, but like drivers. But like drivers. Oh, yeah, sure. From that drivers. Mac OS. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, it's, Mac OS, yeah. it's absolutely reverse capable. Like there's, there's nothing that you're going to lose out on by going to 11 other than like yeah. the start bars in the middle now, which I don't get it, but it doesn't matter. It works the same. You hit the, the Windows button and just start typing. That's all you care about. And the and the, the you can actually move it over to the left side too and make it look like the old one. And and that it awful looks... TNC chip or T TDM chip TDM chip. Yeah. I think it is. Well, if it came with Windows 11, it's got to have it already. So. Is there a, is there a, a similar software to de bloat it like there is on the 10? Yes, there is a yes. Windows 11 de bloat. Mm -hmm. Chris Titus is a YouTuber and he's got an awesome uh, PowerShell tool for it. There you go. Awesome. Well, thank you. I'll go ahead and crack this thing open okay. and uh, get it running then. Appreciate okay. the info. It's definitely not as big as a change like when you went from, say, like XP to um, Vista or that. Like when back in the day when XP drivers were like huge, you know, like the huge driver changes when they changed architectures. It's it's pretty much painless other than UI. Yeah. As long as it's not another Windows ME. No, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not. not. Yeah. They learned that mistake. Trust me, I know. I tortured myself by doing it, Don. Uh, they they didn't learn their mistake because they released Vista. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's like Star Trek movies, every other one. Yeah, right. And if that's the pattern, then this is the other one, right? But we'll see. Yeah, well, yeah, like I said. Now, with that said, uh, the H, uh, you said HP, but also the one that, the, the, the one that I'm now calling the crap top, which is the replacement to the Jankopotamus, that is a gateway that you can get on Walmart. Or I was going to say, I bought that. I've got that same exact laptop with that blue color and all that. And the it's a two-in-one? What do you mean two-in-one? You can fold it over and it's a touch it's a touch screen. It's I a don't, tablet. I never tried folding it over. I don't know if it does that. Maybe That's not. That's funny. So I have the one. It's a two-in-one. It's $150, um, and you can get them in Walmart on rollback for $99. That's it is bad. way faster than the Jankopotamus. It is a touch screen, which is, uh, and the screen is actually really, really nice on it. If you de bloat that sucker, it is fast. <laughs> like, again, it's still a slow computer, but it is way faster than the Jankopotamus. It is, it's, it's, it's actually not bad. Like a pie. Well, the the one what thing is, I was surprised is it does run off of 12 volts. So. It, yes, yeah. yes. But if you look at those uh, Celerons, that Celeron range, the, yep. the, the one that Jankopotamus has, and there, there's a 5406. And every time I found one of those, they're running on 12 volts. Yep. So I think that might be a new thing. We just have to find laptops it with those be. processors yeah so if it's it, a jasper lake that might be a thing then it, it's, I, a, it's I, a low voltage celeron processor so it, it's a I, low voltage platform and because it's low voltage it runs off of 12 volts or 13.8 yeah so you can, i haven't tested it for rfi yet though that's the one thing i haven't done 
Well, you just cut the thing off and, and run it off 12 volts. Well, like my, my work laptop, every time I, every time I transmit on some see, bands, it'll see, that's, do that. That's the USB thing. That's the interesting thing though, right? If you, if you're all on the same power constant, then your RFI is going to be less mm. likely. Um, the only introduction of that would be like USB, right? So for instance, if you had a 705 and if you're getting uh, RFI on the 705 over USB when connected to the same 12 volt constant from the laptop, then it's likely the 705 is trying to charge off of the USB port. If you turn that off and you just run off of the DC connection, you'll pretty much lose all of the RFI problems. And if you still have a problem, you're likely picking it up off of the coax, the feed line into the radio. And if you just add a, uh, just take a ferrite, put like three loops around it, put as many loops as you can, but if you can only get three on it, then that's that's really all you need. That And that'll solve it. On the feed line, not the USB cable, the feed line. And then if you still have problems, then you put some on the, the USB and that's it. That, that'll pretty much do it all. Yeah, a Ape went over all of that this morning on Coffee and Ham Radio. Oh, did he? Oh, yeah. Well, nah, well, I, gotta he, go. I gotta go watch that. I've been meaning to make a video on that just to answer this question because so many people have been talking about the 705 and all this RFI over USB, and it's like eh, it's it's not that like it, it's the radio that gives you all the options, and then if you have all the options on, like yeah, it's gonna create RFI, particularly if you're charging over USB. But if you turn all that off, it's it's great. It's fine. Hey, Josh. Yes. I forget with your uh, your tough book. Didn't you get the twelve volt car adapter charger with it as well? Uh, I did not get the twelve volt car adapter with the tough book. Okay. But but hear me out. This goes back to my whole twelve volt world, right? The car adapter is stepping down the voltage, right? Or it's stepping it's it up. It's stepping it up. Yeah, it goes from up. usually like 12, 12 to 14 yeah, to yeah. 19. So I, I want a world with none of that. Like just everything's flat. Like flat 12, 12 to 13.8. That's my perfect. I don't want a dongle or a bit or a bop. Yes, as hams, we got all those things in our arsenal. Our, our, our bat utility belt is full of all these little things we can pull out. But that's just one more thing that I'm going to forget to put in a bag and go in the field with. So I want like... I want an all uniform voltage constant. That's me. Oh, That's perfect. me. And yet the truck has 240 volts. And yet the truck will do. Yeah, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I mean, it'll do 12 volts too on the front, 240 in the back. Hmm. That's right. It's business in the front and party in the back. Yeah. Oh, see, there we go. We got. We got a picture of uh of the gateway in the wild. The the crap top is is getting out there. I haven't even made a video on it yet. I just talked about it on the podcast and I've been posting it on Instagram. That's it, the blue boy. The blue one is cheaper for some reason. The uh Walmart charges you more if you want it in black. So just buy it in blue cuz who cares? We're we're all dorks anyway. Like spray paint can and yeah, I, yeah, I might just give, spend give, my money. Give it the uh, give it the the '90s or the early 2000s hacker treatment yeah. and just spray paint mm. that thing right yeah. on the keyboard. Two dollars fifty cents. Put a bunch of stickers on it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Sell the jack of bottomus for seventy five dollars. Oh, I'm dude. sure. I, yeah, I'm I wonder sure. what the resale's like on the jack of bottomus right now. Seventy five to hundred. Is it really? Oh my god. Yeah, they're going for about a hundred mm. on eBay. I've got one that I gotta I, I gotta give it away then I think. I think I'm gonna You have single handedly created a market for that laptop. Mm -hmm. I, I might have. I might have. I think that's yeah probably true. Our our club was buying those things up before well, we you, noticed them and I I think I didn't... you told me. I think you're the reason yeah. I found out about it was uh on an after chat before it yeah, exploded. There, there's a guy in our club named Ken and he had found them at, uh, at micro center, uh, just on a whim when he was in there one day. And this was like three, four, five months before. And I, w I was seeing him talk about it on the deal, but I didn't really get one until I, until it really dawned on me what he meant by it runs on 12 volts. I, I literally, <laughs> so this will be part of the video for the crap top. Uh, I literally took the the Denko Hoshnasi collab battery, 
to Walmart and Best Buy and just a plethora of different size coaxial DC plugs. Mm -hmm. And I just unplugged all the computers that I could and plugged in. Just I just straight <laughs> plugged in a 13. With your battery? Yeah. Just straight so, sir, do you need any help? <laughs> no, man. Nobody asked me anything. I was just walking around no, with a battery. No, of course not. It's Walmart. No, I did it at Best Buy too. I was just unplugging. Like I, I, see I doing that with my three amp hour. Anything, anything that was under two. The, <laughs> the KB three HCT found a picture of it. I, I, uh, I literally just started unplugging any laptop that was under two hundred dollars and just shoving power plugs into it to see if it would charge. That because it's not listed. Nobody lists this. Nobody cares no. about this. Nobody cares. Or USB C even like. This is literally my Instagram picture right here. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I and... was just going around plugging in. <laughs> plugging yeah, in this power. I, I think really we should look in at, at that at those uh, Intel processors and see because it seems like every one of them that's made with that processor is running on 12 volts. And so this is like the seller new thing. Yeah, yeah. That seller. And there's a, there's a range of them there. There's yeah, the one in the Jankapovinus and then there's a 5,400 series too. Uh, I'm a, so couple of, couple of comments. I'll get this one out of the way real fast. Uh, all capital letters. What a Brie tactical antenna length is the longest manageable. I like the 21 to 24 inch models. I think those are probably mm. the best bang for your buck. I think the 42 plus length inch one is they perform really well, but they're kind of unmanageable, particularly on mm. any kind of HT. But, you know, your mileage will vary. Uh, also, USB-C for life. I totally agree. I totally agree. If you can charge your laptop off of USB-C, that's great. The problem that you run into is like on the Surface Go, it only has one port. So oh. you, 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 how, mm -hmm. do you, how do you both connect your radio and <clears throat> power to it if it's running off of USB-C? You use what I have and what um, I learned at a uh, put outing. Was um, rather than using USB C, you can get a car charger to surface, and that car charger end has a barrel jack, I, and you can just snip yeah. that, put power poles. They they make so an just... adapter for that. But then it, again, it's you're, you're stepping mm. it up. You got to do something to get it into no. the voltage nope. range. Six twelve volt. It the surface the, does the not. Goes. The surface goes. I dude. have one. It doesn't. I I have the cable. I I bought I bought the I bought yeah. the twelve volt well. and I snipped it and I did the power pull thing and mine hmm. will not charge. I'll check my out then because I... I I'm wondering if I have like a different model of it or something that it. What do it, you have? You have the Go or the Go? I have the Go model, the newest model of the Go. Okay. Okay, I'll check so, what. So that what might I be why I just I just have uh -huh. an old you know or a new one that doesn't do it. But uh, yeah, I if that works, the the surface is back on the list. The surface is a is cool. I really do like it. I think it's uh, functionally very effective for what we're doing, and it actually runs pretty well. I haven't even debloated it yet, and it's pretty fast. Uh, but that that little weird two prong connector thing that it's got, yeah, I I can't I can't get it to charge off of twelve volts, no matter what I do. I'll check in that. I've got a uh, Surface Pro 6, and uh, it does not charge off 12 volts. I've tried. I, I think that's... Uh, sorry, Surface Pro will not, that's for sure. But the Go, no. the, arguably, people are saying the Go's will do 12 volts, which I, I have not been able to do it on mine. Prototype says there's a Bree HF antenna. Is that true? Does anybody know about a, a Bree HF antenna? I mean, they make a CB style, like a CB antenna, like that. I wonder if it would tune up on the sixty one hundred as like a use it as a HT for like twelve and ten. They make a and CB antenna. A I think CB? I think uh, Ali Alibaba or one of those sites does have an Abri HF antenna. Yeah, it's real long. It, it may not actually be a Brie. It may be just like a knockoff of a Brie or whatever. No, oh, I think they just relabeled it every just, you know. Yeah, there's somebody's dropped a link for the for the Brie uh, in I the uh, chat. 
Oh, and, that's uh, that's just a tapped vertical. That's not yep. that's not a folded. Uh, okay, let me get this out of the way. Uh, yeah, no, no, it's not. It's not that style of like tactical or anything. It's just a HF antenna with a with an Abri name on it. Right. Abri. TC Fitz, thank you for the uh, super chat. Appreciate you. Well, I mean, Abri yeah. also has HTs allegedly. If you look on, yeah, Poly-HTS. again, re- rebranded something from something mm-hmm. else. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're all things. If if you're thinking about buying a tapped vertical go watch my live stream that i did i I did a live uh tapped vertical shootout there are a couple of good tapped verticals and i say good in the like the uh you're still putting (laughs) putting lipstick on a boar kind of antenna like it's they're not good antennas the the, all this part and here here's where, where am i at all this part right here from here is all just a coil of wire that's what mm-hmm. this is. It's it's just a big loaded vertical, and the loading mm-hmm. is not going to create an efficient antenna for you. So, yeah, that's, that's looks like we'll an out, that. Outbacker clone. No, the Outbacker is way bigger. I I've mm-hmm. seen an Outbacker in person, it, and they are. It big. looks like an MFJ clone. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, it the, does. The, okay, the yeah, box. a little maybe a little more like the MFJ. Yeah, yeah. The MFJ toy box basically. Yeah, like um, a toy box. Yeah. Yeah, but the toy box isn't tapped, right? It's just a series of coils. It's the same concept, though. You're, the, it's still, yeah, yeah. The, well, the the, the high anything from forty through ten is tapped, and then you can add the eighty coil, and then yeah, you can the add the one sixty coil. coil. Yeah, and I, I've I've actually had luck with my uh, uh, with my toy box, but the that tapped vertical thing, I I literally right now have it as a holder for my reels of or spools of wire that's mm-hmm. that's the best use i could find of it for it now i had good luck with my like 43 foot vertical that had the little box well with, with the that, loading coil yeah. at the bottom where you actually had like a little alligator clip but, that you would move but this thing you, isn't uh, over three foot tall this is not a yeah. 43 foot anyway. right right well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that thing i worked i worked all over on 40 meters let, that thing worked oh yeah let, let's also busters. let let's also add to this a little bit uh, super janky antennas are going to work really, really well for everyone now that we're running into a high solar cycle. Oh, so yeah. So as, as the solar intensity gets stronger until 2025, you can basically run anything you want mm. uh, on 20 meters and up to 10 meters, and you're still going to make contacts. It could be total trash, but it's still going to be fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, right? Well, so longer. Yeah, in, in ninety one, portable CB antenna. What was that AC four? Yeah. You 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 started out a little jarbled, but then what was that? Uh, I posted a link to that foldable CB antenna with the BNC connector. Oh, I see it. Okay. I just wonder. If, I wonder if the sixty one the X sixty one hundred tuner would tune that up because right. you know you can kind of use it as a HT because it's got a PTT button and a microphone. I mean, if it's eleven meters, it should probably be close enough. Yeah, That's... I I I've used le- uh, ten meter or eleven meter antennas on ten. But it's 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 only forty two inches. I'm sure it's probably got right, some kind of coil better. on the bottom. Oh, it's got to have a huge coil on the bottom. But th- th- mm. uh, all the abris have coils generally. And the thing about CB is, and and this is one of the things I had to watch for when I was doing CB, you'll get antennas and do they tune? Yeah, they tune. Do Can anybody hear you on them? No. Right. So uh, I do find it funny that this is a CB antenna and they're showing a picture of a Baofeng or, yeah. a, you know, a Baofeng VHF UHF clone. So yes. I, I don't know about this one. This is The Baofeng will do CB. Come on now. No, you shut up. No, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, so, so Josh, have you uh, seen the new 6100 firmware? No, I haven't. What did they do to it? No, the, these two, this Russian hacker has hacked a complete new OS with a new firmware on it. Polish. It's R1, it's, it's an R1 call, but it's an R1 call. Poland doesn't use R1 though, right? It's an R R one CBU is oh, there's the two guys. Yeah, there's a there's a CT or CT call which is Poland. 
but the uh, main guy on his, it's an R1 call. Uh, T.O. has a video on it. It's, it really changes. It's a complete rewrite of the interface on the uh, 6100. And it's all open source, too, supposedly, although I couldn't find the source code. I don't know where T.O. gets that. All but. Russian. Did it run on your radio? Yes, it did. It's a cool interface. Yeah, it's a, it's it's way better than it, than what Zygu came up with. And uh, the the other thing I wanted to know, Josh, is did you get your parts for your uh, uh, your uh, SBIT X? Uh, what what which parts? Oh, I don't. I honestly well, I, don't I got know. The, I got the final parts. I mean, I you know I did the video on it. We, we, we oh no no no! This was like a couple of weeks ago. I got this package in the mail for no i didn't even know what it was and i opened it up and it's from those guys in india and it's a bunch of parts and i assume it's a new retrofit for the s bit x oh okay it, it was just a it was just an envelope <laughs> what 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 are the parts uh I, i've got it in my pocket i can look i i really haven't even taken it out yet okay yeah tell me what the parts are or you know maybe pull up the the forum if you could, and let me know. Yeah, I will. Um, okay, so let uh, since we got a break in the action, we we had Tank in here earlier. So shout out to Tank Radio. Make sure you go sub to him on the YouTubes. I I we we don't have uh, ham ready for non techies, unfortunately. And Mike is probably busy doing God knows what. He's got a lot going on, by the way. Winter field day, maybe? Maybe, maybe. Maybe he's out there killing it. Uh, but Adam is here. So, Adam, you want to say anything? I know you've been talking a little bit. Are you on the mic? You want to give a shout-out as a YouTuber in the house? <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't been up to much lately. been real busy with uh, search and rescue training and some operations and work stuff working on the taxes for uh antenna kit sales last year got to pay my california sales taxes which is uh good fun and that's taking up my time for video editing so um i do have a video in the pipeline probably coming in the next i don't know maybe few weeks or so i'm i'm hoping to wrap it up it's from the transatlantic summit to summit party in uh uh november and i made a number of uh, contacts from a summit in the San Diego desert over to Europe stations in uh, Spain and Portugal, which was pretty dang cool. And they were also, you know, portable stations running from summits. So, oh wow, That's those were uh, wow. yeah, those were, those were firsts for me. I've I've never worked Europe summit to summit before successfully, and I got multiple in the log on that day. That's awesome. Portugal yeah. used to be a superpower. Since my wife is in the chat, I don't know if she hears that, but. That's what I'm <laughs> I mean, literally, <laughs> that's, no, you know, it, I, Isabella. <laughs> no, we, we used to, I don't know, we, we'd go to these dinners and stuff and hang out with people and somebody would bring up Portugal for some reason. And we'd always like say like, whenever we had the opportunity, we'd say Portugal used to be a superpower. Did you know that? <laughs> so it's our inside <laughs> joke. No, was it was I, it uh, Columbus? He was a he was an Italian that was uh, sponsored by the Portuguese. Right. <laughs> I don't know. It was it was a crazy world oh, back in the fifteenth century. World. It was a crazy world. He, he he was he was commissioned by Isabella in Ferdinand. Of Isabella, Spain, yeah, of Spain and Portugal. Spain, Portugal yeah. and Portugal was a superpower, and 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 that's why Brazilians speak Portuguese and not Spanish. Yep. Yeah, I, I do have an interesting antenna that I'm working on, and I was uh, doing a little bit of uh, modeling today in Adam Fusion. Swissery. Yeah, for um, for the the boom and the spreaders to hold it. Uh, basically, it's a it's a sort of a W8JK antenna variant. So it's um, a couple of doublets, relatively closely spaced and fed 180 degrees out of phase. And what you get out of it is bi-directional gain. And my plan is to put a tuner at the, um, basically up at the, the top of the mast at the rotator, 
and then have um, a couple of open wire feed lines feeding each doublet. And on uh, 10 meters, this is a, f a free base gain plot in the live stream text chat there, and it's, it's basically a bi-directional beam. And in free space on 10 meters, I should get about uh, six, what is that, uh, 5 dBD, a little over 5 dBD, 5.23 dBD of bi-directional gain in free space from this thing. And plop that on a summit, on a summit and I should be able to get some pretty darn good uh, DX performance. And the, the bonus with this thing is that it'll, it'll tune, um, it should tune basically 20 meters and up. So is what is what are you showing that sitting on? Uh in the the 3D mo the Fusion yeah. 360 image. Ah uh, yeah, okay. So um so it's sitting on uh a 3D printed rotator design that I I created. It it oh, runs okay. off of a little 12 volt geared motor. Yeah. Yeah, that that looks a lot like those mass toppers that Ham Radio dude and I are, have been building and so I bet you could drop that directly into one of the tops of one of those uh, masts. Yeah, like I, the I, clip I mast. Pool cleaning. Uh huh. I use a pool cleaning pole, but uh, yeah, th those other masts would work just the same. And on the ends, the little sort of T pieces on the ends, I, I made sort of dovetail slots to uh, to assemble it and make it so it easily mm -hmm. breaks down. But uh, I've got four seven point two meter telescopic poles that'll stick out the ends of those T T things to hold the, the doublets out. Right on. Mm -hmm. I love the, uh, you, you kind of like experiment with a bunch of antennas and sometimes they're pretty esoteric. Like I, I, I don't know many people are like, Oh, this is my portable bobtail antenna that I just drag out. Like <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's pretty cool, man. That That's how I worked Europe summit to summit. I, the double bobtail. It's, it's pretty impressive, <laughs> man. It's pretty impressive. So, I mean, how do you, uh, how do you discover these? They're kind of like esoteric antennas. Like how do you stumble onto them? Uh, reading books, watching videos. Um, I've got uh, is pretty much all the wire antenna books I can find, and I uh, actually just bought another one on Amazon that was like six bucks, and it's a, a book just full of, of antennas. I'll see if I can find the link if it's still available, but it's a pretty cool one. Well, that's you, awesome. ever, you ever go to those sorry, websites with all the old uh, antenna plans on them? Oh yeah, yeah, it's great. And that's, that's what this book is from Amazon. It's, it's basically like an archive of of some of that kind of old old stuff and there's just there's probably 150 antennas in this book mm. oh that's cool uh, pretty cool and it was six bucks but uh but yeah so the <laughs> the other thing i'll do is just you know model stuff in in mma and a that same software that callum uses and uh just you know start tinkering around with things and that's that's how i figured out the uh the the double bobtail i said well what if i take this bobtail curtain antenna and try to put a reflector behind it. What happens? And lo and behold, I was like, "Hey, that actually works." So you know, you just experiment sometimes. Right on. No, I was replying there. Everybody, reminder: Hamcation. God, going to be there literally in a couple Two weeks. weeks. Two weeks, yeah. man. So I hope you're all coming out for that. It's going to be uh, a lot of fun. This year, I mean, I don't even know what to expect. By the way, people have asked me, like, are we doing a get together? Are we doing a happy hour? Um, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I assume that we probably will on Friday night, is my guess. And we're staying at the. Oh man, I totally forgot. Rosen what and... The Rosen, and there's a lot of stuff around the Rosen, right, Paul? Like, do you think we could probably just. Talk yeah, I mean, there's, dinner place and... it, it, there's tons of places. In that yeah, area. you're right on international drives. So there's a million places. There's a million places uh, that you can get together. Um, we go to a place called Tutu Tango, which is kind of cool. Um, oh, we had a Tutu Tango sure. out here. Yeah, same. It started in California, and then that's right down the street from the hotel. Okay, maybe we'll do. It, it's probably not going to be like a big brew pub thing like we normally do. It's probably going to just be a spot that we can get you know, a, a decent place for people to just hang out. It could just be like hanging out in the bar area. I don't know uh, right now, but it's probably going to be Friday is my guess, my guess right now. 
Um, or Saturday where some of us show up a little bit later. We don't know because there's a couple of things going on on Friday. Hey, Hosh, I just dro I just dropped a, pin, a restaurant pin. I don't know. I don't think it's by by where you're talking your rest your thing but look at look at the name of it uh super cyan it's a anime themed thai? noodle shop anime themed noodle oh, it's shop cyan i thought it, was like gonna be thai but okay no super saiyan oh super saiyan so I, I i read that as cyan okay super saiyan <laughs> i like that good it's actually really good too, i'm gonna go but... with the uh uh what is it saiyan super saiyan god uh bowl of soup please I, I don't know why i can't think of nothing but uh no soup for you no super for you i'm gonna take a quick minute to run to the restroom so uh you guys keep it going i will grab another beverage and i'll be back shortly you guys uh chat amongst yourselves if there's questions now's a good time to ask them i'll be right back because we're going to talk about reset the ham radio recession maybe not maybe who knows soft maybe who knows we'll be right back be Soft right landing. Back. enjoy the memes Go ahead, guys. Yeah. No, uh, Super Saiyan's pretty is actually a pretty good uh, little restaurant. Where Where is that? Uh, I dropped the, the I actually dropped the Google pin. So if you look, um, in uh, live stream, you, you, I I tagged Josh and dropped the pin. Looks so like it's see. north of Universal. So yeah, it, it's it's right by Universal. Um, it, it's good. All right, though, that's not it? for. Hey, if you like, if you like, like good like good ramen it's really good ramen but it, it's it's anime themed damn it matt now i'm about to go down the freaking orlando that's how i happens. used to I, I i used to always i used to uh every time back when I, the kids and i'd go to rocket launches uh if it was an evening launch we'd go there for dinner because the kids were like huge anime for nuts so we'd go there for dinner and then we would go wait for the rocket to launch over in, in cape canaveral because it it's kind of orlando's kind of on the way um it's like it was like 20 minutes out of the way to go up there so it was fun I used to work right there, <laughs> Universal. It's worth it just for the pun. It'd be worth it just for the pun. What the? It, it you literally, you literally walk, you, you, It's not really a pun. You literally walk in the place and they have like TVs with uh, Dragon Ball playing all over the place. It's like it's 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 a really neat neat restaurant if you're if you if you like if you like like uda the all, all the different japanese noodle type stuff they got them all so if you're in orlando i and you have time it's definitely worth going over there i haven't been in a couple of years i want to go again i'm yeah, not, not too no, I'm sorry. not not too far from uh their hotel they, they just opened a uh, a new Korean barbecue place that might be able to take Ooh. everybody. It's right around. It's literally right around the corner, off just off of the International Drive. Ooh, yeah, I, I could see a shut. It matters. I don't know how many. You shut that place down. down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, we, we need the whole restaurant. We need plates of meat. Um, we the HRA. We're probably for our Pacific Beach trip next year. Are actually <laughs> this year we started yeah. we're pro we're probably gonna actually have to rent the whole restaurant um that we get prime rib at on a friday night we're probably gonna have to rent the whole restaurant because apparently last year they basically took most of the restaurant over and that that event grows every year so if it grows much bigger we're probably just gonna have to rent the restaurant for like three hours wait what okay so i just came back what is this we're talking about um so the Pacific Beach get together that HRA does. Oh, and nice thing. Um, on we Friday took over night, like half the bar. Uh, on Friday night, there's a restaurant called the Green Lantern up there that's re that does prime rib. And this year, we literally walked in, and there were like twenty something people. And we literally like six just, people. Yeah, we literally took up the whole like half the restaurant. And next year, we're thinking that we're gonna have like thirty five. So we're 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 probably gonna have to just rent the restaurant for like three or four hours next year. Uh, or, or in October, it's not next year; it's in October. 
Very the, cool. Good. Do it. The, yeah. Well, the, <laughs> the, it. The, the 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 dates will be w w w dates will be f uh, the finalized in October in April because we can't get the ho the rooms the houses uh, until six months out. Okay. <clears throat> But once the dates are final, I'll make sure to get everybody that might want to be interested in coming. We'll we'll start talking about it more. I'm sure Chris will be there. He just has to drive up. Me? Yeah, you. Yeah, I was like, oh, buddy, pull, buddy, pull Chris kind of first. <laughs> or he know you did CN75. I'm try. I, I've been trying to get him to come back. We'll see if we can't get him that uh, get get him out there. He's a busy guy. Oh, that's. Completely unrelated, uh, Psycho or PS4 CHO just dropped a comment about the Android FT8 app, and this is pretty sweet looking. This is a cool looking app, man. Check that out. Run an FT8 with the with the call signs on the vertical waterfall like that. That is that's cool visuals for sure. I will have to go check this out. Oh, metrics? Oh, you got the real dumb engineer brain in me going nuts thinking about that. That's that's really pretty slick. And there's a mapping function? Dude. What is it called? You got it. Uh, no, in oh, it's a, side, it's a side load on GitHub. Oh, you son of a all right. My loads aren't that bad. No, nah, they're not that bad. I'm like, I don't care. It's a oh, he dropped the link. So let's let's pull up the link. Yep. Makes it less usable for normies. Oh, it's got Chinese in it. It's gonna <laughs> it's gonna break my it's gonna break my Android. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. Runs natively on Android. Okay. I may have to I make a video that. on that. I may have to make a video on that. That's pretty cool. Well, thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. Yeah, and see uh W six zero or is that O O D or zero O D? Anyway, he's also talking about that Russian sixty sixty one hundred firmware. Uh, sounds like it's pretty good. Yeah, T O really likes it, and I I've got it on my radio now. It it looks really really good. So is it completely different visuals too on the? Screen? Oh yeah, yes. completely oh. different. Hey, uh, Don, can you take an image of it really quick? Just take a picture of it. Like, let me take uh, a look at it. I would like to. Look yeah, at I'll, I'll pull it. I'll pull it off. Tio's oh yeah, video. go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, or or send. I guess send me link to Tio's video. Let's give him a shout out, and I'll sure. drop the link for it, and then uh, we'll take a look at it. I'm gonna go. I, I should have done this when I was coming back from the restaurant, but I'm gonna grab a sweater really fast. I'll I'll be right back. Drop the uh drop the link while I finish this QSO. Man, it's hot here. <laughs> Don, just take a uh, screenshot with uh, Alt F4. Okay. And Matt, charge your phone. That's disrespectful. There, I dropped it. Hi, Alex. I'm at 19 so percent. And actually, the the thumbnail itself it shows the firmware. All right, I'm back. Yeah, I dropped the link in the chat for his video. All right, let's. Oh, hey, hey! Look at that. That's a pretty. That's a yeah, waterfall it, I can get behind. It's got pink in it. Well, it's. Yeah. I think you can customize it quite a bit, and the buttons are the the buttons you're seeing at the very top of the screen too, and, and along the bottom. It, it's a, it's completely different looking. It does look different. But how how is the like the the waterfall? Because the waterfall on the original sixty one hundreds was pretty. Well, look at noisy. the thumbnail, Chris. Well, like in op actual operation, though, like well, it, on the it's, 1600, it, it, it has TO shows it running. All right, I got hoods on hoods now. Does it have all the features like that the factory firmware does? Uh, yes, but it, it it still has the flaws. As, as, as I understand it, it still has the flaws, the factory firmware. It brought does, everything like, over. Like the, um, uh, the Wi Fi. And I think there was, oh, yeah, I don't think it supports the built-in microphone. That right. was something that somebody said. All right, let's let's uh, let's jump through this really quickly. I will drop the link in the show notes really fast, so we're giving proper credit to the good guy. 
that is Steve, temporary offline. Hold on, let me do that. You guys make sure you go. Stub to Steve, he's been on my channel before. Right away. There Probably is have a back. brand new firmware. Look at this. Ain't she a beauty? This is fantastic. Welcome have to the new, back to talk the about new the new 6100. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. Oh, <laughs> Convince me to buy one. Let's go take a spin around the dial and see what's up. I just, oh, I just had Would such a troubled this experience with it. This is that is cool looking. Every day. Okay, let's mm -hmm. pause that. That is... Uh, yeah, that is... Yeah, that is... That is... Uh, I just like... I like the pink. That is a nice looking... I don't like the buttons, to be honest. I don't like the bottom buttons, but... Okay. <laughs> X6100. What is going on here? This is the R1 CBU firmware. I mean, for what it's worth, I had good luck today with mine at field day. Good for you. Animal. Okay, so let's let's take a look at this. So the 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 S meter is on. Can I? Am I? Where's my mouse? Oh, you see it? Okay, good. So th there's your S meter on top, mm -hmm. and he had a display that was showing earlier where it showed you voltage plus time, which is pretty nice. Uh, yeah. You got the spectrum display right there in the middle with the carrier frequency, and then you got the waterfall. Uh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Let me advance. Yeah, back. and that the pan adapter has that peak meter on the back of it too. Oh, okay. Yeah. And there's your ATU attenuator selection there on the side. So he's Pretty redone. Good. Yeah. The entire interface here. I'm gonna jump ahead a I mean, little this bit. Is, and there she's coming back now. Oh yeah, it's got a little ghost. It's got the ghost spectrum display right here. Right, See, right. It, it floats yeah. a little bit. The float for the peaks. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's very seven oh five. And then, or if you notice, when he's tuning there, uh -huh. uh, the, here in the corner, you can portion of the band that you're in LSB, will display tuning, underneath the uh, anyway, in the waterfall cetera, as you're tuning it. So you know if you're in the CW portion or the SSB portion oh, of the so band. Oh, oh it has like delineation. It has delineation. It's like a different color or something. No, it was a little uh, thing in your uh, in the display that you had up there. <clears throat> so it tells you like you're in PSK or you're in. The... Oh, nice. Okay, let's uh, go ahead a little bit. I think he's diving in the menus. Some, um, yeah, he's diving in the menus. All right, let's. For some base OS underneath, and a FD8 time going on tonight. Front end, and it, you can come join us over on the Toads Discord. There's a yeah, link go in check the out the Toads Discord. Below. They'd like to deep dive on nerdy stuff, stuff like this. Super contribute. cool. This is R1 yeah, there's CBU. two channels for 6100. One of them is the hacker is channel. Version. Like settings, antenna, the download button. It's 100. Save it somewhere. Hey Josh, how's it going tonight? Hey man, how's it going? Thanks for joining us out here. We're having some fun. Close. I'm going to pick OK. Back over. Yeah, what happened about Winter Field Day? I saw a video about Boy Scout Merit Badge Challenge, but that was about it. Yeah, I didn't do it. <laughs> no, uh, I I didn't win her field day. I I don't I don't think I'll. Well, because what what does it wrap up tomorrow? Is it like noon time Pacific? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, it's one central. So I could probably I could probably just wake up and make some contacts, give some people some contacts. which is you know, hey, that's two to two, idea. right? Or well, well, uh, you're nineteen hundred to nineteen uh, to eighteen fifty nine, right? So mm -hmm. I'll, UTC. I'll, I'll give you my thoughts on Winterfield Day. Like the Winterfield Day only exists in like two frames of mind for me. Either I'm gonna like go to my dad's where it's like proper cold, or I'm gonna go somewhere that's like a proper winter experience and I'll do Winterfield Day from there. Or I'm gonna go somewhere that's just completely ridiculous. Like the beach that we did, you know, I I did the live stream from the beach, um, and that was a, a whole mm -hmm. lot of fun. That was great because it was like yeah. COVID. So we did like when we were oh, I set off the I think I just set off a fire alarm with FT8. Hey, uh, I was trying to find videos on actually trying to set up some of the digital stuff like JSA Call and Vara Chat and and WinLink and stuff to send messages, you know, with the field day exchange. But I didn't see any YouTube videos on, on getting all that configured. And then there's some logging stuff that you have to do too. So it turned out just to be like, okay, Nice digital stuff, but we're going to go back to CW and voice. Uh, so winter field day, you can't use FT8 on winter field day. And, and the, it's the reason's really simple. <laughs> it's not an emergency mode. You can't like if I was in an emergency situation, the last thing I'd ever do is um, is use FT8. I, that's just not effective for that because you can't pass traffic. I would use something like JSC right. call I, I, I or PSK 31. 
Yeah, JSA call, you just log the contact in your logger. If you want to type it in I, manually or you could just copy it off later. Hey, Josh. Yeah. Uh, that's me, K4. Uh, we lost you. Got to hold down that button. That's that's me. That's K4. No, he lost you again. You got If you're on the phone, you got to make sure you're right on there. I think it's my PC. Oh. Oh, because you're transmitting right now? K4ROC, yeah, is that FTA. you? Yeah, that's me. You set off my fire alarm. <laughs> Just kidding. You're good. Well, no, I thought your, uh... your call was a winter field day uh, proper mode. Uh, FT8, absolutely is. not. FT8 is not JS8. JS8. Is, yes. Though. Yeah, JS8 or any other digital mode where you can actually have Anything a key. With so, a keyboard. Yeah, keyboard yeah. type modes were available, but yeah, FTA, yeah. which is our JT65 and those, you know. Right, and I was specifically looking for how to set up those CAN messages so that the QSO goes a lot smoother and a lot quicker and then also doing the logging stuff to go to your logging program. But I couldn't find anything uh, on uh, on that on the web. Uh, just Type it into your logger. I mean, yeah, okay, I, I understand what you're asking for, like, macros to do a lot of that stuff. Um, just keep in mind that, like, JS8 doesn't really do macros in, in the traditional sense that you would do with, like, PSK31. For logging, though, uh, getting it to log into something that's your primary logger, it, it does, but you would have to go into the settings and, and set that up for... Uh, connection via IP or whatever. It's very similar to WSJTX, which I have videos on. And I also have videos on JS8. And I used JS8 on my uh, Winter Field Day video in 2021, I think. So you could probably go check that out. But I didn't make one this year. So. Right. And then there was the Vara HF, Vara chat stuff that I was trying to demonstrate but um and then also the you know vara win link stuff you know mm -hmm. we were trying to we were trying to use the ecom kind of method that winter field day was was trying to get out there that's right and it ended yeah. up being about a contest more than a, about uh about trying some new digital modes so i was a little bit disappointed but we'll see what happens tomorrow uh, why? What, why were you just, what do you mean? Like, it, that's up to you. If you want to make contacts on VAR AC, that's, or VAR chat, that's, that's up to you if you want to do it. Were you just not finding people out there is what you're saying? Well, here's the situation. The club president said, we're going to use the ICOM 7300. I don't have ICOM 7300. So I had everything set up and done at home on my 991 Alpha, and so then it's like trying to go, you know, Ford versus Chevy kind of thing. Okay. I mean, the 7300 is really easy, though. You just plug in the USB. As long as you got the driver on your computer, that's probably the USB it. cable, it's really easy. Different different COM port numbers and stuff like that. Yeah, and I mean, that's different audio settings, things like that. So uh, th this would be a really good time to mention that, like, if you are a part of a ham club and you're going to go out in mass and use a radio and you're going to have multiple people there, you really do owe it to yourself to, like, use the weekend before to set all this stuff up and try it out. And document it. Document yeah. it. For and, and, write it and write it down so that, like, people can do the things you do when you're not there. Like... I, and this is I, I'm this is a bit of a humble brag. Like you can put me in front of like most radios and, and computers, and I'll, I'll figure it out, right? It'll take me a little while. I'll get there though. The problem is, is that that's like when I'm there. Like okay, I've set it up. Now I'm leaving. Okay, fine, right? But if I don't have the you know fortitude to write it all down, type it up to make a note for somebody that then can kind of catch up to what I'm doing if they go back to single sideband or whatever or CW uh, then they're they're not necessarily going to be able to do it if I don't tell them how to do it right and so I appreciate you're like hey I tried to find a video and you didn't make one so you know yeah I guess I didn't but 
you you can do this. You can do it. It just you you need like a weekend beforehand. Trying to cook it all up the field day weekends not a not the best situation. Or depending on your antenna, you could also look at doing multiplexers. Uh, well, I don't even think he's at that solution. point. I think he's talking yeah. about like just trying to get James a call working, right? But yeah, sure, you can multiplex your antenna if you've got the hex beam or something yeah, like got, that. Yeah, just throw your nine one on one port and you're mm-hmm. good. What? I I, I yeah. still so, I still. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, Josh. So no, I'm not accusing you. I'm just I, I I'm just saying that I, I I did the research on YouTube, you know, and and tried to see what I could find. I kept on coming on to. Uh, Jason uh, KM4 ACK's thing, but he's he's not a Windows fanboy. He's a Linux guy and Raspberry Pi thing. So it was like I'm using Windows, and it's like it, it you know it was just a little frustrating. I'm a truck driver. I can't take you know I took way too much time off already. I've been off since Tuesday, but you know it was just you know it's just one of those things. No, you know? man, it, it I, I get your it. Profession. Well, uh, first of all, I think Matt's in here. Matt's another trucker, and so we, we've definitely got our truck driver ham radio friends. Um, I get it. I get where you're coming from. It, it's tough. you know. I mean, it's tough, like, making videos. I have no – I mean, that's that's the best part about this hobby is that, like, I have no end of content that I can make. And there are these little specific niches that people do need help on, like how do I make my logger play nice with single sideband contacts, CW contacts, and digital contacts for something like winter field day? Because on uh, summer field day, ARRL field day, most people, digital, they use FT8. And guess what? FT8 is like really easy to integrate into your log. Like it'll just, mm. it'll just hop right in there and you got no problem and everything's good. Um JSA call though and other logs like that, they will actually JSA. It's probably like the easiest way to do it. But t- to be honest, like uh, I'm still gonna go back to my original thing. You as a human being, when you're doing single sideband or CW, you're still typing in a log. You still gotta type in the call sign. You gotta type in all that stuff. You can do the same thing on digital. You just type in the call sign, type in the signal strength, and that's it. Like that's how you do it. Just type it in. That's it. You st- you got to type it out like that's you can make it work, man. You can, you can do it. It's not a problem. You just it's not the most efficient, but it's it's no less efficient than how you would do things if you were doing single sideband or CW, right? Yeah, you're correct. The only yeah. one thing is I had logged one JSA call connection, mm-hmm. but the guy never sent a Roger Roger. I sent out my thing to like all call or even tried to do a direct message to the ham that was calling me and he never came back. So, you know, it was just weird, but I went ahead and logged it anyway. I was like, well, hopefully got my information. I saw his Log across anyway. the screen. And yeah. So you're, you're good. You're good. I'm assuming you're good. And, and the other question, have you tried uh, the Vara AC yeah. and seen that there's two different versions? There's oh. Vara AC and then Vara chat program and the VARA chat one is like a dumb terminal and the VARA AC is a real fancy uh, one and everything. So I, I have done a VARA AC video. If VARA chat came after that, which is probably likely, uh, that probably changes things a bit. But if you, if you go watch my video on VARA AC, yeah, we, we did a, a live stream on it. I really need to get into some of that stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I, I found it kind of similar to Winlink to using the RMS Express peer to peer kind of thing. Uh, yeah, it, it's like peer to peer. It, it is. It well, I mean, by definition, it's very peer to peer. Yeah. All right. Well, that was all my comments. Sorry for interrupting you guys. No, you're but good, yeah, you're that's good. my experience with Winterfield Day, and I'm just trying to get the wow factor into our club on some of these digital modes, you know, that they're used for e-com and stuff like that. Cause it's, it's really uh, exciting and fun. Uh, how do you build a, wa- okay, well, this is a whole side discussion. How do you build a wow factor on digital modes? For me, mm-hmm. um, I think you do it by showing um, how you're getting out. Yeah. That's the best mm-hmm. way. 
I I think you show like you bring up PSK reporter or something like that, and you sh and you show people like how far your antennas is making I'm, it. I'm gonna reference a classic video that you did, FT8 man. Oh, <laughs> okay. You, this yeah. guy had his brand new like that was Shane. Years that was old. Shane. Yeah, Shane. Shane who? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you're showing him like here's how far you're getting out, and all these guys in HRO are like, you're getting out that far on 20 watts? Like, wow. That that's like PSK poor is a great way. Yeah, it it's um. Oh, he's in the chat. Ki six uh, QFI. He's he's out there on uh, YouTube. Uh, it's that's the coolest part about the digital modes is that because they're connected to the internet, most likely the stations, they're reporting where they heard you from, right? And that gives you just like all this like. I mean, literally, what what you're seeing above those pink lines that are drawn, that's from all those stations here in Mexico, and I think there's one in Cuba. We have a Cuban station. Where is that? That's no, that's not Cuba. That's uh, is that Dominican Republic? No, Puerto Rico. Jeez, I'm so bad at Central America. I apologize. Um, that's yeah, the Caribbean. He heard me at negative fourteen on FT8. Right, so he's he's connected to the internet and he's posting again. He heard me over RF, but he's reporting my signal strength via the internet, and I get to see it on my screen. And I'm making it all the way to South America. This guy like, always hears me. I, I've never known. I used to see him, but... myself hitting Africa on my vertical, like yeah. So it's super a cool. Happy vertical. Yeah, super, super, super cool to be able to like visualize this and. Um, this is one of those things where we're leveraging the internet as amateur radio operators to show how our signal is getting out, which is just um, it's just fantastic because I've I've used this technology, this, this same capability to demonstrate the differences between antennas that I've used on the air. We've done this on live streams where we'll put up different types of antennas and show you their transmit receive capability and be like, you know, this is why this is a better antenna, but, you know, it may take you longer to set up, etc. you know, whatever. That's kind of the point. So Shane... Uh, he he asked, uh, "What's what's all this recession talk?" So I'll I'll use this opportunity to change gears a little bit. Okay, so I am seeing a situation. The the this is me reading the the tea leaves on the teacup. So we we've come out of 2022, and we've seen shortages on radios. Right, that's a thing that we've all experienced. The 7300 was kind of hard to get. Um, obviously, there are newer radios out from like Yaesu, the 710, FTDX10, all that. But uh, the 891 right now is unavailable at Gigaparts. I'm assuming that could be an order thing. But in parallel, we're also seeing the prices go up on radios. And so if you listen to the podcast yesterday, uh, which dropped today, I am starting to think I'm I'm doing I'm putting on my my business uh, ham radio glasses and I'm forward looking into a future where I see we're in a situation where the interest in ham radio is rising, particularly in HF. Uh, there are more generals and now technicians looking to get on 10 meters to buy HF radios that do 10 meters to possibly parlay that into being a general in the future, that we're now in this world where demand has gone up. We're still in a world where the chips are not unobtainium, but people are charging peak prices for it. So people are having people being manufacturers are having to buy these huge lots of components to be able to build radios. And they're having to pay a lot of money to do that. And so as a byproduct, they're going to have to increase prices. And if they don't, which I am sure to some degree that there will have to be a price change. But from a retailer standpoint, if the supply of radios starts to go down and the demand continues to increase, the retailers will continue to raise prices, which we have already seen. The best example of that, the easiest example of that, is what we saw with the, uh, the Yesu FT-818. The 818 went from being a $650 radio to, at some points, uh, over an $800 radio when the announcement was made 
that there was a re- uh, no longer in production, right, from Yesu. That is insane. Right. So HRO at some at one point had, and I think uh, I'm not. This is not a declarative statement. This is just what my I thought uh, what I think happened. I think that it it crested above eight hundred dollars, right, on a lot of the retailer pages. That to me is an indicator that one demand meaning new hams has gone up which okay i'm partially to blame for that so are a ton of youtubers and so are a lot of people that are out there singing the praises of like how much fun ham radio is okay good we got you in the door but now we're in this situation where it's like the prices are already going up or already have gone up and will continue to go up and supply is like just kind of trickling along right so John, that is a recipe for a recession from my point of view. Another good example of that's a Lab 599. Well, the Lab 599, uh, went unfortunately, up for reasons, but it went up a lot. Well, but that's because of the, the trade embargoes against, um, Russia. against Russia. Russia. I mean, people yeah, are buying $3,000 for a 100 watt amp, too, for that. But... Oh well, oh geez, yeah. The that amplifier, the five hundred watt amplifier for that thing, no, is the, like three thousand dollars. No, the hundred. No, the hundred watt. Oh yeah, the list is a mile long. The, I, no, I'm on that well, hundred watt. You can you can buy you can buy it on eBay. The hundred watt you can buy on eBay. They release like one or two a month on eBay, and the bids will go up anywhere from two to three thousand dollars easily. Yeah, that's, for the expedition amp. I, I will I will not do a hundred watt amp for three thousand dollars. But so th- this is part of the kicker on this. So I I, I was trying to buy a, a seventy one hundred. If 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 y'all remember, I don't know if you if you remember if you've been watching me for that long, but we did uh, every year, right? I I do a Black Friday video, and on Black Friday in two thousand nineteen, this radio was towards the seven hundred dollar range. Right. Uh And it's been out for a little while. Still a good radio. Um, Mm -hmm. But like the most recent time I saw it at like HRO, it was cresting seven uh, to like a thousand dollars to like eleven hundred dollars. Right. That's a huge uh, price increase. And it's it's purely combination of demand. The demand hasn't gone down. But also accessibility to components and accessibility to the supply of the radio once it's yeah. done. HRO, HRO is saying right now $1,445, and you may not get it till at least May. Yeah, they're, they're price gouging because of the increased sunspots. Yeah. Um, uh, you, you, think it's the, it's, you think it's the solar cycle that's causing it? No, I'm kidding. Okay. I was like, Jesus, Don. (laughs) (laughs) That was out of left field. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) You know, you know, it's how I'm like, uh, what? (laughs) What are we talking about? Well, I mean, in a way, it actually kind of is. I mean, you know, you got a lot of people now that HF is starting to get back in track that are wanting to upgrade, get their generals and get their extras. So therefore, you have a increased demand Mm -hmm. for HF Mm -hmm. radios. Well, and and Mike is doing his, uh, you know, Wednesday technician things, and I think techs are starting. To, I've I talked to a couple of techs at Winter Field Day today that are specifically getting on ten meters every day now, and they're uh, they're getting uh, used radios. Uh, in one case, I think I talked to somebody that had gotten a TS five twenty S from uh, somebody else, and. Uh, was using that just to get on 10 meters. And well, so, I, you know, I've, I've been a long advocate of, Hey, you know, if you can't get a new radio or you can't afford a new radio, a lot of the dealers carry used gear that, that, that they've checked out. They've had their techs look at. And mm-hmm. you know what, that eBay is one thing, but when you actually go are buying it from, you know, a gig of parts yeah. or an HRO, you know, at least they've had somebody go through them and make sure that they yeah. work. And R and L, and and by the way, I have a video on uh, my channel that's about buying from the manufacturers or from like Giga Parts. Yeah, the dealers, the dealers. Yeah, the dealers. And the one that I like the best is R and L because if you go on R and L 
and you see their used equipment and you click on that that particular radio it will show you a visual screen uh, screenshots of the radio and then they in their uh uh in in their list will show you what their uh bird watt meter read for that particular uh oh that's cool uh, oh wow yeah that's, yeah that's cool i mean we used to have you know when i worked for aes out in vegas we had bob was our technician and Oh, who was, I want to say Phil or something like that in, in Orlando. I can't remember his name exactly. Phil? I don't know. At any rate, but they, they would go through and, you know, and, and they would, they would check them out, make sure they were clean. If there was repairs that needed to be made, they would do it, but they, they were, they would rate it and say, okay, you know, we can offer them X amount, you know, uh, yeah. you know, as a trade in value and so on and so forth. And they would bag it and tag it, put a price on it and we'd put it out on the shelf, you know? So, let, let me dive in really quickly. I will mention that this uh, news post was ICOM UK, and it was from 2021. So this is a bit of an old news story. But um, we're, we're seeing, as mentioned, production goes into effect in August. So August of 2021, we're still a year extended away from that, right, 2022. And the supply of the 7100 is not improved. So I'm 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 a I'm a little again I'm just reinforcing the concept that we have a a an interesting place that we're entering into because and so hear me out here mm -hmm. if the amount of radios that that we can bring out and I say we but I mean from the manufacturers starts to decrease and there's only so many options out there like a decreased amount of options then all of those options that already had a person, a ham that was going to buy it, now has three hams that want to buy it, four hams that want to buy it. Hmm. And because of the increased demand, the prices will go up. And if the prices go up, then that's going to depress you know, who potentially can own them. There was somebody who said there, uh, the, 70, the 705 goes for like Fourteen hundred dollars if it's converted. I, I think they mean like all band converted, but like for instance, that kind of thing, right? Which is that's uh that's a serious amount of cash uh, for that for that radio. Yeah. Super chat from Josh KD nine VJS. Hey Josh, I got my extra license during last week's stream. Got my nice. HRCC extra merch on the way, and hope to see you at Hamcation. Been busy mm. with Winter Field Day today. Well, geez, Josh, you, you're the better Josh of all of us. You got your extra. Uh, well, thank you for buying some merch too. You didn't have to do that, but thank you. But is also participating on Winter Field Day, so you're the better Josh this weekend. Congrats to you for getting radioactive mm. out there. That's great, man, and congratulations. Thank you for the super chat. That's super cool. Yeah, I just got, man, Europe is coming in big on 40 meters. And this guy from Croatia just out of the blue called me. I'm not even I, making it. I'm not even making it out of the, off the, off the ocean there. Man, Bulgaria, Spain. Well, uh, are you on your vertical? Over. Are you on a DX commander? Right no, now? no, I'm on that stupid uh, MFJ infed half wave at my sister's house. Oh wow, that, so, that's a pretty good even, station. Really, that's that's well, impressive. it's a it, it's a flex radio. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't have you everything. know as as much as as much as I'm sure the flex radio is a part of it. It is definitely your of, antenna uh, too, and the place. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's not it's not bad. I, I mean, and her house is probably two dB at least quieter than than mine. Oh, that helps. And yeah, and then. Well, I mean, if I had a vertical out there, like the one of the DX commanders, it might work bre better. But I, she has a yard guy, and I don't trust him over the, you know. Oh, there's Northern Ireland. Jeez, it's 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 crazy. Is it? Like, I was seeing this on ten meters this morning early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm seeing. I'm seeing. I put put out the wide, open the scope up to be wide, and I'm seeing stuff all over forty. Big strong signals. So there's a lot of people out there doing Winter Field Day. Well, there this are. is on FT8, Luxembourg. Well, that's all the people that that that, that don't <laughs> they can't find a space on the on the bands to they don't want to participate. So they're they're like, I'll just go do. Uh -huh. Well, this morning early there was a contest in Belgium, 
And so there was a bunch of Belgium guys on 10 meters and I worked like three or four Belgian oh, wow. stations. Yeah. That's cool. And then one off the MFJ German, at your sister's house. No, no, this was, <laughs> well, I was going to say the, this was that's... the on and a, uh, a thousand watts. Oh, but, okay. You know. <laughs> I was going to say, that's pretty good, Don. That's yeah. really and, good. And also it was the Moxon. So I was getting some gain off of that too. Okay, cool. That's, that's awesome. I'm, I run a, uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I run the MFJ. Uh... Oh, we lost you. I heard I heard FT8 in the background too, so I know you're radioactive right now. Go ahead. I think it was Darren, right? Yeah, I, I run the, uh, F, the MFJ um, Infed. Yeah, how yeah. do you like it? It does well for me. Nice. Yeah, at my sister's house, it's a little noisy on forty, but. It works 10, 15. I've, I've tuned it on 17 even, uh, of course with the internal tuner, but, um, so yeah, it, it's, it's doing the job for me and it's just a silly piece of wire strung up between tied to her fence and one side on the low side. And then it runs up, uh, to, uh, her neighbor's fence, uh, on one of my 25 foot masts. So it's only at the at the top of the slope, it's only 25 feet. Yeah. I mean, that's about what, I mean, my end fed is I got a rope tied to a tree in the backyard mm. that get runs over the roof of the house. And then, uh, on the front side of the house, which is technically two stories up and then some, so what is that? That's probably about 25 feet, right? 25, maybe 30 from ground level. And then it runs down to the top of a tree that's down the slope. So, yeah. What is Dota Canis? Uh, it's an I, Greek island, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm going to try to. It's a, a, to a work tower in. defense game. It's called Defense of the Ancients. Yeah, he just he just showed up on FTA. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I've gotten I've I've got I've worked and I've probably worked him before. And Alaska, Alaska's showing up here too. So KL7J is on. Oh my God, Don's just showing several... off right now. Well, I'm, I'm sure you can hear him too. Asiatic no, I can't hear him because I got I got a high noise fire. I think the I, there's a video coming. I've got new RFI from our uh, uh -oh. remodel we did. It's my uh, LED slash LED dimmers. Oh, I know. Oh it's, yeah, um, I, LED lights are the worst. I I don't know what to do. I got to figure out what to do. But stop being energy efficient. No, I do don't the know if LED it's the lights in the in it's, the pots. I don't know if like it's the lights, lights or the dimmers. Well, it's Just they're can candles. lights. They're they're can lights. It, they're the they're the self contained cans that go into the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, that's with the light. It. Yeah, they, you. Good luck. Uh, yeah. I'd like I'd like incandescent bulbs better. Yeah, and the, yeah, they do. No, I don't know. I I've got all I've got are canned incandescents in this house. It's built in sixty seven. I can stand yeah, the bulbs. Yeah, but but you can't. What what you get today are self-contained hi hats that go in the ceiling. Yeah, and you just oh, replace. I replaced one of these the just a few the, weeks ago. The current the current bulbs you can get are going to be halogen. I think is what they are now by law. Mm, yeah, incandescents are like de banned. depends on the, the. That's a state law, though, isn't it? Nope, federal EPA like. Years ago, under Obama, I think they, when CFLs were starting to get big, they only do halogen-based uh, incandescents. Now you can't get any of the tungsten blues. Well, all right, well then tell me where, the, where where the hell is the black market? Because I ain't I ain't following that one. Canada, you can that find them. Canada. <laughs> yeah, find I, them I, in, uh, I, I actually there's some stores here that sell nothing but incandescent we're gonna we're gonna do a smoky and the bandit for incandescent bulbs from canada well yeah you, you, wait you guys, you guys hold on you know about the uh um the the, the 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 reason i said that was because there literally was a black market for toilets out of canada when we mm -hmm. went to when oh, we went the to the, the, the yeah when yeah. we went to the low, 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 low because 
<laughs> Canada didn't go to a low flush toilet. So in Michigan, people would drive I'm to Canada dying. to get this their 2.5 gallon per flush toilet. <laughs> mm-hmm. I need. And they say people then, from Michigan. I need that hot flush. flush. All right, we gotta we gotta I break. Go ahead. Go ahead, break. Go ahead, break. <laughs> guys, this is uh, W7RGS. I'm uh, here in southern Utah with the Dixie Amateur Radio Club. We're running winter field day right now. It's pretty freaking cold, but our setup is awesome. <laughs> That's awesome, um, man. So we no. we teamed up with our Aries guys and said, yo, dog, do you want to talk to the county? So we actually have one of their big inflatable tents out here from uh, the COVID days. So they <laughs> they were using these tents. Uh, to expand onto our hospitals um, for the craziness that was going down. So we got heaters going. It's pretty freaking awesome. Except um, we're we're in downtown, which was a slight mistake because the, the power lines are above ground. There's mm-hmm. not any super close, but still an issue. Um, but anyway, I, I, I just realized the after chat was going. So I was like, oh, oh that's I, cool. I got to get in on that. Oh, thanks, so, man. Hmm? Uh, wait, 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 I will... Uh, what part of downtown are you by the tabernacle? Uh, yeah, I'm actually I, from where I'm at. I can see both the tabernacle and the St. George LDS temple. Oh, so you're kind of t- towards the east side. Yeah. Uh, so, well, it sounds like, you know what you're talking about. I do. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to Salt Lake a couple times. Yeah, I've been all around there. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, this is where we're at. We met you out at Hamcation. Yeah. Um, and you know, like, we know who you are, obviously. That sounds kind of creepy now that I say it, but it's okay. <laughs> anyway, we, it's cool, we lit man. up it's our... Cool. Uh, we got a tower trailer here that we built for the club, um, and it t- takes our beam up 35, 40 feet, something like that. Uh-huh. And we put a light at the base of it, and it looks pretty awesome. So I Whoa. will post a picture so of that. Ryan, yeah, pics yeah. didn't happen. Yeah, pics, pics would be great. If you take some pictures and put it up on the live chat, I'll put it up on the stream. That'd be great. Okay, that's uh, great. Yeah, I'll I'll wait. How how do I do that? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, can I do that through Discord? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Take pictures on your phone account. and then uh, post them in the uh, live dash stream chat. Okay, I'm not super good at this. I mean, I'll tag you. Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Oh yeah, I'd but, love yeah. to see it. I'd love to see it. Uh, I, the Salt Lake I City will... skyline is really nice. It's a it's a pretty town. I I do like Salt Lake. Oh yeah, and, so we're actually we're we're on the southern end though in St. George. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I know where you're yeah. at. Okay, cool. But um, yeah, so anyway, hopping on here, um, I do have two two extra comments. One, forty meters for us sucks right now. We're on an off center fed dipole like twenty five feet up, and uh, forty blows. Eighty also oh. blows, but. That's how it is. Oh, try um, thirty. Try thirty. Oh no, you can't because mm-hmm. it's work bands. Never mind. Oh, try yeah. six. Try six? six. Yeah, six. Six doesn't matter. And if there are other well, clubs in your sure. area, that's what we used to do. We in the middle of the night, we get bored because forty and eighty sucked, and we would go and work six meters. And there were clubs all all around North Texas oh, that we cool. could get yeah. on six meters. Why not? Well, try it at least. What the hell? Yeah, yeah, that, that's not a bad idea. We'll, uh, I'll uh, suggest that to the guys in there, and we'll try and uh, do something. But no, I was on twenty meters with our beam earlier, and uh, I was getting between three and four contacts a minute, just pounding them out. Hmm. And uh, so we're we're like what five miles from the Arizona border on the south end here in Utah. Yeah, and uh, one of the guys was like, "Yeah, we got Arizona, woohoo! Yeah, woo, yeah." And I was like, "Hey." You take that claim because uh, I got the rest the rest of the East Coast already, so you don't have to worry about that. But you take Arizona. It was kind of a suck it. It was fun. Um, but, <laughs> but anyway. Um, well, yeah. A little, little oh, ham radio uh, now, jib in there? Or? Oh, yeah. There, there, sure. was, there was one club I heard today that was on, um, they were, uh, what is it? One India or, or two India. Um in utah and they had a lady running it and she had a freaking huge pileup and i know that was because it was a lady that was on there yeah actually i don't it it may have been a young girl too because she worked another young young girl from uh arizona 
So, um, and, and after hearing that, that girl in Arizona, I was like, oh, okay, no, I, she may not be that, that old, but anyway, yeah, she was just killing it. There were people just clamoring at the bit to get her. So shout out to the, uh, uh, big block Chevy that they're using as a, a, a stove <laughs> <laughs> at the Ogden amateur radio club in Ogden, Utah. So Ogden, Utah is also out there. We got Tom AF, uh. Uh, AF7J, there you go. Hi, Tom. <laughs> Eventually he's out there. He'll hear this, but uh, yeah. So You anyway, can work each other was... on six meters. There you go. Make that happen. Yeah. Hey, yeah. that's actually a good idea. You, Hey, Tom, check out six meters. We're going to get there eventually tonight. So, I mean, okay. And uh, my other beef, I, I always I always have to bring this up, okay? Actually, no, I don't. Okay. But it's, it, it's kind of a sad point. Here we go. We I got work beef. At, well, it's not really that much of beef. It's Where's just a, beef? more of a complaint. Okay. You guys are talking about lights and the pain in the butt they are. Yeah. I, uh, ironically enough, work for a lighting company here. Um, it's like one of the, you know, you order the chandelier from your house. We, come, we get it and ship it out, whatever. And St. George is the fastest growing city in the country. Not even joking you, since COVID hit, we have literally built so many houses. It's ridiculous. Um, and everything and values gone up ridiculous and if you couldn't tell ridiculous right um but anyway they're sending all these flush mount lights out that uh i'm not sure who it was that was talking about them but rather than having a bulb you just it's like a, a puck right Right, it's a puck um, yep it makes me cry for all those developments that can't have antennas very well because of those stupid things because Man, radio is life, and when the stupid house destroys radio, destroys life. And I, you know, as as someone who has the pucks in my home because of a recent remodel, uh, I I hear what you're saying. Like I have to go, I I literally have to open the door and tell everybody, turn all the lights, turn all the pucks off. I got to turn all the pucks off. I I want to figure out what to do about it though. I don't know that there's much we can do to be honest, because I think they're just all massive noise Candlelight. generators. Candle. Note to self: Whale don't buy oil. We got to go back to whale oil. Start, <laughs> start killing the pilot whales again. Let's get the oil out of their heads. No, we're not if there's oil, a will, man. there's a way. That's what I say. You know, I mean, really. And if it gets you out, if it gets you out, better. I mean, what? How bad can it be? Or you just flip the breaker every time you walk in the shack. You just flip that breaker, and you know, I've done that. The I've token have been that important, right? My, my wife was very unhappy when I started tripping breakers on her but yes i i hear where you're coming from <laughs> <laughs> well very good all right well i'll back out of here i'll let you guys uh get to doing what you're doing i'll throw a picture up and uh, oh please do yeah, uh, yeah. Take, take a couple of them show your antenna and the operating position that'd be great we'd love that we'll post it we'll, we'll show it up I'll, on the stream if, if you don't mind uh i'm also going to post them on our uh our uh, Instagram, uh, Southern Utah Ham Radio. That's us. We're the weirdos in Utah that play radio. Um, also, another solution to the lights, just go play Poda. That's what I say. Right. Yes, absolutely. I hear All you. All right. You guys have a good night, and, uh, yeah, we'll uh, talk to you guys later. Thanks, Josh, and uh, stay hydrated, folks. All right. Take it easy, man. Very good. That was cool. We got live correspondence of uh... – on the scene. Oh, on the reporting. scene for winter field day. Hey, by the way, uh Salt Lake, that whole area gets really freaking cold. <laughs> it 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 uh, part of being the southwest, you think, oh, southwest, pretty warm. They, they Utah gets really cold. In fact, it is, I think, uh they have a a huge like decline area that ends up in like a, a lake and it's a really deep, it's it's almost like a fissure. It is the coldest uh, on the continental U.S., I believe. That it's... little depress is the coldest place you can go. Tomorrow remember... afternoon, it'll be down to 16 degrees out there. 16? We, we don't get quite that cold here in St. George, um, but they get up to 80 and 90 with uh, in, the, in the summertime. But here, we're, we're pretty similar to Vegas temperatures. We uh, it, It's not uncommon for us to see... Um, no lower than a hundred degrees in the middle of the night during the summer, and uh, up to like one hundred and twenty. So, like, like ret retaining oh, that heat late into the night in the summer. Gone. Yeah, yeah. And the town right next to me is called Hurricane or Hurricane, whatever you, crap you want to call it. But there's a reason they call it that. 
you get the freaking hot air blowing through there and my goodness and then there's all the whatever people that have their jeeps right and they take the tops and the doors off and it's like dude you're going 40 miles an hour that wind is so blasted hot anyway that's my soapbox (laughs) there you go hurricane hurricanes where uh, matt's off-road is filmed out of this is the story yeah we're fans of that too yeah, don't don't talk about Randy like that. Dang. Right on. I right, well, thank you for the live on the scene correspondence. Appreciate it. All right. So Hey, no problem. We're always happy to be the live correspondence for Winterfield Day. I love anyway. it. I love it. <laughs> All right. Anybody in the YouTube chat, we're paying attention to the comments and the Twitch as well. So if anybody comes in there for questions, good on you. But uh let let's go back a second for the ham radio recession. So has anybody paid more than you thought you would for ham radio in uh in this year or I guess the end of last year? No, I I think I paid a pretty fair price for my on Uh well for the on on, okay. That I mean, <laughs> that's not, already not pretty rare place. stock, right? That's already pretty well yeah to get your hands on them yeah but i mean hro they they were not they, they were not chart really gouging for them and they only got the eight in and they sold them at a pretty I mean, reasonable how, price how many people are knocking down hro's yeah it's like for two oh it's, they sold them out and another and, guy eight no guys. they they sold all eight of them it's out like in, in less all than eight seven of them. days yeah oh, not price wise but Don the and seven series. of his friends Don and seven of his friends. That's it. Uh, no, y- y- y'all need oh, to like listen to K1GMM or uh, his YouTube channel or KB2UDA. UD- uh, both of those guys. You listen to li- listen to him and see what Anonan will do. You, you, you'll know why we've got him. I think that's oh, why you got a flex. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. Nope. I'm not uh I'm not against the uh the so for anybody okay we 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 do this occasionally and I think it's worth repeating. So an anon which is an A N A N Alpha November Alpha November radio. It's Apache Labs, right? Yep. Yeah. So that uh I don't know uh, completely about the history on this, but uh HRO has been carrying them for a really decent amount of time um they they i think they've been around in the form of apache labs equally as long if not longer than flex and they they make you know high quality sdr radios that they are definitely not giving away they are they are expensive higher level radios that that don is talking about here for hf mm-hmm. <coughs> so and- and yeah, Josh, go ahead, go ahead. Josh, Josh just bought a clone of one. I, I did, I did. I, I have the, uh, I have the, the Hermes light that I, mm-hmm. I still haven't seen the shipping notification, which is kind of wild. I expected them to ship uh, that thing when I bought no, it. It's, it's Fe- pre- February. It's a free pre-order. Oh, it's a pre-order. I bought a pre-order. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man, and it said it, you, oh, my you God. told, you told me on the thing. You, oh, yeah, they said they'd ship in February. Did I say that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, see, I I was like panicked buying buying this thing. Everybody that, started sending a me a message. You got to no, go buy they, the Hermes light. You got to go buy the Hermes they light. They sell like, out really quickly. <laughs> no, I know, I know. Right I I told all the patrons about it. Tell everybody it's like, okay, just go buy it. I'm sorry, go buy it. Don said go buy it, and everybody's like, okay. Nah, he, Heath Heath said it. Oh, go buy it. <laughs> well, anyway, so what? The point is, it wasn't just me. But go ahead. No, yeah, yeah, no, and and I I am I'm positive it's a good radio i'm not even worried about that uh, i will do a video on it when it shows up so i'm i'm excited to give it a shot uh, but so i guess uh, this might be an interesting time to just ask don so don uh thoughts on the flex versus the uh the on on there the the apache labs what, do, what are your and thoughts versus the sun no uh flex no because that's true no that's true because i have all three Right, and I'd I'd say they're all three. I like all three of them sure. for different reasons. Yeah, and so the the Anon has features that neither of the other two radios have. 
Um, they all have different levels of noise reduction in them. Uh, the damn it, the flex will not stop transmitting. I have tried and oh, I know why. Anyway, um, that's that's WSJTX's fault, not not the flex. Anyway, um, or it's the idiot operator. Uh, so uh, the the flex has its own. I mean, again, remotability. It truly is the most flexible radio platform I've ever used from transverters to the amount of inputs it has to the amount of outputs it has. I, I don't really see an, either of these other two radios having that level and, and basically to the 101D. None of them have that that capability that the Flex does. They're not remote ability. There's nothing that matches the the ability of the Flex to remote. Um, there's uh, the individual. I, there's so many features on the Flex that I for me to go through that I it would I'd be here all night explaining it. Um, they're uh, setting up the radio, the profiles in the radio, and being able to say, for FT8, do this. Uh, for uh, and I click that profile, and the radio does that. I I don't have to. I only have to go through and set it all up once. I never have to set that up again. I just select the profile, and every, all of the settings for the radio go to that deal, including switching to that band. Um, and that's just one of the many features in it. So the software is very, very flexible, very powerful. And the fact that it comes with a uh, COM port uh, connection and an audio connection built into it. So I don't have to go download VB cables and I don't have to download uh, COM zero COM. Uh, those yeah, those applications are all built into the Flex. Um so it's just a very powerful platform in software. Then you go to the Anon. The Anon is, again, the Anon has the, and this is according to uh, Sher Sherwood. Right now, it is the best, cleanest transmitter out there, bar none. Um, that was his words. He, he, he spoke that on uh, Rhea's channel one night when he was on with Rhea. So um, the reason for that is adaptive pre-distortion. A lot of radios, including Flex and Sun, have those built in, but they have never implemented the feature. Only the Anon has the feature built into it. And um, so you get an extremely clean transmitter. Even if you're using an amplifier, it can take the amplifier input and still apply adaptive pre-distortion. Um, so all, all of that's built into it. It has built-in phasing. So um, like the MFJ 1026, those kinds of things, mm -hmm. it, it has that built into the software and the hardware. And uh, I just recently started playing around with that. So uh, it has the best noise reduction of any of the three, well, any of the four radios that I have. Um, the, probably the second closest would be the 101D. Um, the sun, uh, for me was the best one at dealing with my own personal noise floor. And to this day, I love it for that reason. Uh, the other thing is that the sun has built in two meters, so I can do two meter, oh, okay. uh, FT8 on it. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of capabilities. Now, ape just bought a sun SDR, Jim, um, uh, KN4YCD Jim on uh, Coffee and Ham Radios. He just bought a um, uh, a Flex radio. Oh, uh, the uh, uh, and then Chuck just got an Elad. So uh, all three of them are now experiencing the wonders of uh, as true SDR radios. So I mean, Maybe. if you had to rank them one to N, whichever one you know is at the end. What, what what would you put your ranking for the SDRs that the high dollar SDRs that you've played around with? Uh, I wouldn't because oh come on, Dodd. no no I'm come serious. On, Dodd. Ah, they all come on. to me to me honestly, Josh honestly yeah they all have different feature sets sure that all set them apart. 
they're, and they're so like your saying, children. You you love them all equally. Is exactly. Okay. And, and I, all right. And I will say what also, a, what a, <laughs> that's never true. Uh, all three, all three of these radios, uh, the Flex, the Sun, and the the Apache Labs, they're basically all running off of a computer. Right. And, of course. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. But the one thing that I love is the 101 D. Yeah. And all of the freaking buttons. This is why well, I don't yeah, on there's the no buttons in the other the other radios. Well, even a 7610, you do not have the level. I don't need to go into the menus on the uh FTD or the 101D. Everything's okay. on the front panel. So sure. yeah. I, I just I just hit buttons and and all there's a separate set of buttons for the sub receiver and for the, the main VFO. Uh, so it's just, and in the fact that you've got dual tuning knobs, VC tune, the, all of the things that are in here make that radio so wonderful F after working with these for, you know, several weeks in a row, I'll go over and sit down and I just enjoy so much, you know, having the knobs and buttons. So <laughs> I, I realize I have a, you know, a plethora of radios here, but I really do enjoy them all. And they all have their their place in in my life, if you will. And okay. so that's why I don't like to rank them, because there's not a single one of them that I would ever get rid of, because I couldn't get I I couldn't give up that what are, this you know one specific feature. Uh -huh. So for instance, the sun the sun has some very sophisticated software that I really like. It has noise features in it that play with my play well in my noise floor it differently than any of the other th two or three radios actually and it's very odd how sometimes i'm hearing something right at my noise floor and i can make adjustments on the sun and pull it out and i have not figured out i i really believe at some point i'll figure it out on the on and in the 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 uh, flex how to do it but it, it's not as easy to figure out as it was on the sun because it's just basically buttons on the sun. Whereas in the, um, on and in the on and specifically there are adjustments for it. Right. And, and by the way, when you get the Hermes, uh, you will get the same software or I, I would recommend let's okay. put it that, way, that right. you get that, um, uh, power SDR Thetis and install it that is oh i'll be bugging you don't worry when i get it yeah, yeah. like you're well you're, you're not done with me i'm still gonna... <laughs> no no that's that's perfectly fine and and the thing about the hermes is the hermes is not only just like this onan radio and i'm right. sure i could do the same thing with the onan but it's a full sdr so you can run sdr console there's there's a whole bunch of different sdr programs just to turn it into an sdr right and one of the things that uh you know our our buddy tom from the from uh, VK land. Um, he actually replaced the firmware on it. And there is a firmware on it that will give you 11 slices. You can literally listen to 11 different bands at one time. That's cool. Uh, now I, I, I personally never on the flex I've done two and three. Um, and by the way, on the flex, uh, since I'm talking about it and I, I again, I'm, I'm taking up too much of your show, but mm. On the flex, one no, of the I, things. No, I, I like I, I like your your commentary here. I'm not I'm not upset at you at all. You feel okay. free. Go ahead. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I've been meaning to do a video on this, by the way. And but, and please uh, do, please do, because I I think this yeah. is like really again, it, it's probably a small niche of people that are again these are not cheap radios. Like you, no. you you're not dabbling in cheap radios, right? What we're talking about, but at the no. same time, like they're. Oh, man. But but here's the thing. There's a ton of people that are thinking about it and they want to spend their money in, in they want to make their money work for them. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, when you start talking about high dollar radios, um, not everybody can do what you're doing. And the fact that you have that capability there, yeah. videos would probably be really helpful for people. They really will. Well, and if somebody's looking at a flex radio, let me tell you the difference in the models because flex won't do this. And I will. And I've, I've asked, I've asked you should Michael, definitely make a video about this. I, I, I've asked bucks, Michael dude. about this and he, 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 he won't answer my question straight on. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll talk to you about that later. But so flex has a 6,700 like Kyle has, they mm -hmm. have the 6,600, which is what I have. Right. And then they have the 6,400, which Jason has. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
the 6700 is the most expensive radio they sell. But is it the best? In my opinion, no. The 6600 is the best. The reason being that the 6600 has two transverter ports on it. The 6700 only has one. And it's got uh, more basic inputs in it. And it supports full duplex in the radio. Now, the, six, the 6700 does as well, but the 6700 only has the one transverter port. So if you want to do satellites and do full de- duplex between four, you're, four, you're stuck. Two meters, yep. you're stuck. Yep. And the, the 6700 does have a two meter in it, but that really does not replace a good solid Q5 transverter. So you really need to, if you're looking at those radios, I would suggest unless you for some reason are contesting and need those, those extra slices, get the 6,600. It's really the top of the line flex in my opinion. Okay. Comment. Okay. Comment. Go ahead, Paul. Okay. I want to rank Don's radios. Okay. I'm going to go with number one is his on, on. Because that's what he talks the most about. Uh, <laughs> number two. This, this is Paul's two. ranking this is, of this is Paul's of God's of radius. Okay, got it, got it. Because I have the same sickness and I buy radios like stupid people. Okay, so number two, I'm going to say is his 101. Number three, because of the buttons. He likes buttons. Number three has to be the flex because it's at his sister's house. Number four, believe it or not, I'm going to go with the uh, FTDX10. Because it's portable. Poderig. It's his Poda rig. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Number five is everything else he owns. And that's that's the God's honest truth. I, 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 so, Paul, I, I am very much in line with, uh, with, with your statements there, I, I think. I, uh, I know I, Don's not willing to to rank his his favorite children his hermes his hermes light dropped precipitously when he got the on on yeah before yeah. that it was like hermes light hermes light hermes light hermes that's true light, hermes. that's true i i didn't even know what a hermes i thought it was like a bag uh, i did I'm too Paul, spark, that's what i know of it from my wife and i almost talking about the hermes one, and i yeah, realized yeah. it was a radio <laughs> and i was like oh i don't need that <laughs> I, well, I think we're getting cheap. We're, we're, Paul, you and I are getting off very cheap if we buy the Hermes uh, Light, the radio, oh, the versus the Hermes Eddie handbag. Mm. Eddie handbag that's made by oh, Hermes the, is bags ten way, grand and up. Way more expensive. Like you have to get, you have to get your wife that Birkin bag. Um, but anyway, no, that, I, but that, uh, but that's a car. Don man. has an ex- Don has an extraordinarily good collection. He does of radios does. that. Literally fit every niche in ham radio, and and I I I'm I'm at the point where it's like I I, I looked at all of my stuff, and it's like I I haven't touched my seventy three hundred in I don't know how long, so I started thinking okay maybe I should sell the seventy three hundred, but now you're telling me that there's going to be a recession, or and it makes sense, and if the demand for HF radios and, and those types of rigs goes through the roof, that eight or nine hundred dollar used radio now becomes eleven, twelve hundred dollar used radio. And all the all the rebates and everything else that they have right now on the seventy three hundred, which in my humble opinion is probably the best HF radio for the money that you can buy because it's like a thousand fifty bucks and it's up against the FTDX ten and the seven ten. And this, I, if it were me doing it over again, I'd buy the FTDX10. Great receiver, but it's it's a couple hundred bucks more than the than the uh, seventy three hundred. But the the greatest thing is that there's so much variety now, as opposed to when when I came into the hobby and you had to build your own Heath kit radio with a six meter crystal that you plugged in. Mm-hmm. You know that so the 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 radius have gotten much much better and much much less expensive. Mm-hmm. My personal favorite radio, still the the eight ninety one, the official radio of Poda. 
I, I'm still and, 705. And, hmm. I'm 705. I, oh, or die. but I didn't tell you. I did not tell. Oh, my voice went up, so you can tell I'm excited. Oh, oh. I did not tell you. I I just got a 705. Oh, okay. All right. And this 705 uh, is replacing my X5105, my Zagu, which, which I love that radio. That yeah. was my first QRP radio. It's built like a brick. And I can. It is a brick. It. You can kill a guy with that thing if you wanted yeah, to. I, yes, you could kill. You could literally kill somebody with it. But I have not been able to sell it. And I'm at the point where it's like, you know what? Maybe I'm just going to keep it and keep it to like keep doors open, or if the Lanai screens are open, keep the doors open for that, and just use it as that kind of uh, tool. Hey, Paul. But the seven o the seven o five is a spectacularly good radio. And with my with my uh, 125 amplifier, I can get a full hundred watts out of it. Well, it it just does all the things, which is what it I like. It does everything. Yeah, it, it literally does everything. So I, um, I I do have a show off thing that I got to talk about because I I have not told anybody about this, but it's been something that I have been watching for a really long time to secure purchase of before it became available. Um, somebody said they had a comment though, so go ahead comment. Hey, Paul, you want to know how we get the most out of the radios we want to sell? What? How? We, we just need to create a scare in the uh, prepper world, and then they'll buy anything at any price, it seems like. <laughs> I'm in the prepper. Actually, that's how I got to Josh. I got to him through Fieldcraft Survival. I was a prepper before I was ever a radio guy. Uh, yeah, you know what? Preppers are starting to upgrade from their bow fangs to something better. And... Um, that 5105 happens to be a great radio. Um, you, you know, it, 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 it's not the fanciest. It doesn't have a color screen. It doesn't, it doesn't have a, a lot of the bells and whistles, but it does everything you want a QRP radio to do. And it has a built-in battery and it has a built-in microphone. So you literally could take your breeze, stick it on the end, and it'll probably tune it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I... I'm, I'm thinking I may just keep it, but the 705 is just, I mean, I'm, I was well, sitting and playing with it yeah, today and it's just, it does everything you want get, it to do. Get some, get some saddle time, uh, some stick time and let me know what you think about it. But so here's, here's something I'm going to show you guys that I have, uh, I've not said anything about because I, I wanted to secure payment on it and I did. So it's coming from Australia. So there's this, uh, there's this group. And I'm going to go all the way to the top. And the website does not. Stuff. Yeah. The School Amateur Radio Club Network. They have have been working on a gimbaled satellite tracker for a while now. And they have possibly one of the cleanest installs I've seen that I can just strap my, uh, my you know, satellite antenna right onto it. It's it it is uh, X Y and Z gimbaled, connects to a computer. Out of stock, yes, yeah. The sage knows exactly. Out of stock forever. I got an order in on their new version, the MK three B. It's coming. I have been waiting for something like this for a very very long time. This is like. Did you, did you hear that, Don? That's your next big yeah. thing, isn't it? You're going to be a satellite. Uh, I, no, no. Not I am. I, I have. I have been following this for a very long time. This is possibly the best. The best version of this I've ever seen. This is almost completely turnkey. Other than I have to provide the tripod, which, by the way, I already own that tripod that they're showing in this picture. So I'm like, good. I know I'm good. And I have to do the counterbalance, the, the, the little counterweight that's on the side there. I am super excited to get this. I bought this uh, a little while ago. And I will probably use the 705 because it connects so easily to Ham Radio Deluxe. But it's obviously not full duplex. So I, I don't know yet. I, I don't know exactly how we're going to do all this. Um, I could do the 705 as the transmitter and use like the 817 or 818 as the receiver. Um, of course, I would then have to all interface that all into the uh, the laptop. So we're going to see how it goes. And it's we don't a know gimbal? Yet. It's, yeah, fully gimbal. Which gimbaled. parts are gimbal, that box? Yeah, X, Y, and Z. 
Yeah, it does are, all of it. It does all are of the, it. Are the regular dealers not selling anything like that anymore? Oh, there's nobody that sells anything like Well, no. So, yeah, you can go buy the full uh, two boom arm uh, vertical. You can go buy the uh, Yesu 500. Uh, Yesu 500 is the rotor that'll do X, Y, Z. And it's uh, it programmable, so you can you can do satellite. With I bought it. one too, Josh. Yeah. No, and that's a that is a fantastic rotor. But that rotor is five hundred dollars, just like boom. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> so this is a lot very cheaper. expensive. This is way 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 cheaper than that. Yeah, that's the, awesome. Well, we need well, we need cheaper things like that for yeah. I'm super you know, excited to get people to get into this. some of those niche things. You know. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, one of the guys in our club are. Uh, repeater trustee he, they're in stock they're four hundred dollars or uh, uh us is 280 okay i'll, I'll post yeah the i was link. able I'll to get one link. as well josh i bought one uh the other day i'm posting the link everybody it's 200 and something dollars for the us and if you already have a uh uh that's probably cheap a not an elk not an elk antenna i think it's about 380 uh, shipped actually arrow Does antenna it, uh, Does it if include you have the antenna good. no no it doesn't oh, okay so you gotta add that and only one antenna right not two so is is what no one well work? it's using the arrow which is cross polarized. Yeah, I don't know why I always remember them having like two of them though for some reason. I always had. I don't know. If well, no, I mean if if, if you have a receiver and transmitter, they'd be split if you wanted to. You you could do that, but yeah. Now now nobody tell Frank about this. Oh, I should send this to Frank. Oh, is Frank getting into Frank. satellite now? Oh, too? he's already been. Oh, in he's been into yeah. it. He early on, he was into satellites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just never successful. <laughs> but this might help him. I'm gonna send this to Frank right now. Yeah, Josh, I saw the same thing. I actually picked one up as well, just waiting for it to be uh, shipped to me. That's one thing I've never got. I don't know where satellite. I could put that. Oh, it's, well, that's, it's a temporary that's a portable setup. thing. It's a temporary yeah, that's, setup. That's that's awesome. You could just so fold it up and go. How tall is that? Like seven, six feet, seven feet tall? Uh, no. Well, I'm mm -hmm. I'm guessing maybe it, it, if it's up like that, it peaks at six feet. But that gimbal, like if you look at the gimbal box, like at the top of the gimbal box, it's probably like four feet. So what is it you're pointing at with this link, guy? This this all looks like kits to me. Yeah, no, um, the, so again, they, the they don't make this easy for you. If you go to the bottom, 13, item 13 is the Sark Track Satellite Rotor Controller. If you click that, it's like a go-to page. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is exactly what I was looking for. That's why I jumped on it when I saw it. Yeah, no, I've been looking for something like this for a while. So there you go. Look forward to that. We're definitely getting on the uh, the linears, the linears. Where I'm going to be going with that thing. I, I'll I'll bring Sean Cutsko back and we'll we'll talk about it because I I think this is like if they keep making them and they're they're somewhat available because the satellite community is a much smaller niche within ham radio, but I I think this could be like a really cool little kit. We're gonna see. We'll see once I get once I get it going. Did you see the article on QRP on Sean? Mm -mm. The, uh, yeah, and there's a whole article on him this month. On uh, where? QRP? -er? On QRP, -er, yeah. That's a... Uh... Oh, no, not QRP. -er. Um, what's the opposite of on the year from uh, um, ARRL? Uh, you're, th you're talking about QST? Yeah, QST. There's an article on QST on him. Oh, cool. Oh, is it from Steve? Was that the second person Steve I did? I think so. Yeah. Oh, sweet. So I was the first. I was the first one. Did everybody see that? I Steve Steve wrote a pretty good article. I was very thankful of that. Yeah. You're you're famous. Well, it, it's always weird hearing that. I I don't think I'm really famous. I think I'm just kind of the guy who's willing to make the videos and do the things. There's lots of people that listen when when want you get to the invitation, people ask you for your autograph. You know, it's it, you've gone over that line. You, you know what? Okay, I I I I don't really talk about this that much. I I just think that like at the end of the day, most people can do what I do. 
there there everybody has the skill to do what I'm doing. I just do it. That's the difference. That's that's the only difference between all the other hams and me. I'm using free software. I'm just taking a camera. There's tons of people who just use cell phones to do their videos and they and they look great. But you it's the presentation. You you have that that uh and that I, I don't I don't want the, I don't I don't want this to turn into like a rah rah Josh thing. This is just me saying like the only difference between you and me in most cases is that I've just been doing it longer. Literally that's probably one of the most things and that like I've figured out a way that I can do it consistently. That's that's it. That that's really what it is. Uh, yeah, and now, had- I appreciate all the comments on like I have a special, you know, personality or whatever, but I don't know. I mean, I'm just like one of the rest of you. I really am. Like when we hang out in person, we're all the same. Like we just hang out. It's just fun. So, you know. Yeah, well, that's the thing about ham radio. It's it's it's, it's a great equalizer for all of us. We're all kind of we're all more interested in, you know, what oh, what are you doing or what are you doing than than right. who who's famous and who's not and <laughs> you know, it's a it's it's that's, I think that's why we've had in the past, you know, a lot of people that were of more famous, you know, personalities yeah. that, that have been in the hobby. Because it's kind of even like King of Jordan, you know, I mean, you know, and he's just one of us, you know, or he was, you know. Right. Um, but I was going to I was going to say, I was thinking when you talk, started to talk about satellites, I'm like, you know, one of the guys in our club, um, I think there was a QST article recently it might have been the january issue um where uh him and a bunch of kids at uh oak ridge one of the oak ridge schools middle school i think built a bunch of the cube sats that got launched so uh, and i was kind of like oh wow that's cool i know that guy you know <laughs> they did they did a great job and they were designing these little inexpensive cube sets and that's what that's what it takes man we got to get these kids involved um yeah it's it's always it's always kind of weird for me um i did a talk and by the way that I, I was cleared so i did a talk for get on the air for life which is a a group within the arrl that i i did a talk with a smaller group of people trying to talk about how to engage with the uh 35 to 45 year old area of ham radio and i see this and i've talked about this before i've seen this trend where we we go down the like we do all this extra energy to like get to the kids like we got to get to the kids we got to get them like understanding about amateur radio and all that stuff and and I, i'm not taking anything away from that I'm i'm really not because People go through a ton of energy to do that, and I think at the end of the day, like it, it's introducing younger people to it. But the the problem I found is that it's always like a smaller group. It's like if you think about TikTok and the internet and all that, like your uh, accessibility to the younger people is actually like kind of small, and you get them in schools, and even then the, the numbers are very small. But if you if you start looking at the even the 25 to 35, but really the 35 to 45 group, that is the the ham radio, like, I think. Yep. That, well, like, get that's them. The... It, this is the, like, camp, the Joe Cool cigarettes, camel cigarettes, mm-hmm. like, marketing that you need to do. And I, I'm not saying that because I want you to smoke. I don't. But my point there is that like the the marketing for ham radio should be focused on the 35 to 45 year old range where they start having the disposable income because they start yeah. having disposable right. income yep. and 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 here's the here's the best part about this even if the family is totally not into ham radio they can't not know about it because the dad or the mom is at the 35 to 45 year old range if if the the older parent or a parent in the family unit is doing ham radio, and I use that as a verb, there's no way that no one else knows about it, right? Like, it's impossible. And uh, you already hit on it. They have somewhat disposable income. They're at the point where they're probably somewhat 
at a sustainable point in their life where they're looking at hobbies or they're they're already have hobbies and they're they're joining ham radio into a hobby that is the sweet spot and it it it, it really really should be our area of focus most of the time i mean that's oh, that's I, yeah. my channel I think pretty much right. Like right in there the, yeah. the biggest the biggest problem though okay so you know i got my license at 16 i started i was really gung-ho active met my wife got married my activity dropped i kind of had that one of those down slopes and it's very common in the hobby in my in my uh you know i was what 30 when i got married 29 something like that so there was a number of years where i'm raising the stepson and 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 that and i think that's the big thing and once he got older you know that's when i started getting back into it again and i've been into it since so i think that's that's the biggest issue that we encounter when it comes to dealing with that age group is life happens and you have to you know you have to be able to keep that that interest and that interactivity going while people are in that even if all they can do is check into a net once a week or whatever you know well the, no, well, the trick is you got to expose them to ham radio and then get them on hf immediately that that's the truth of it. It really is the truth of it. I I I I love my VHF UHF. I love doing the uh the simplex two meters and APRS and wind link, but you got to get them on the broad the broad aspect of HF. Like you really well, that, do. Well, that goes back to what I think the first time I ever talked to you when I said, "Hey, you know, we really need to push for some changes." Uh, in privileges for the tech license, oh, they I, I need agree. more HF privileges. I mean, this has been what years ago now. Uh, yeah, I agree. We, we're no disagreement there. Like uh, technicians need a little slice on twenty. They need a. They need a little slice of everything. It's it's like going to freaking Costco, Costco, uh, Costco, Sam's Club. Like you 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 go to the sample table. You sample the goods before you buy the goods. Like we we live in a world where what do you test for as an adult? You don't have to test for have anything. Test for as an adult. Like why why would anyone have to test for anything as an adult? You you just experience life. You you pay money and you experience life. Ham radio, we we have this barrier of the test, right? It's been there for forever. And I'm not trying to get away with that. Like I'm not trying to remove that. All I'm trying to say is that you, you got to give people a taste so that they know why they want to go down that rabbit hole. You well, like I give said, them something. give them the oh. work, give them the work bands uh, on low, low power and, uh, you know, uh, 100 watts, whatever, cap them at 100 watts and give them a slice of 20, 40 and 80. Uh, and and oh. and then that'll encourage them to update. Plus, it'll also get the work bands more active, you know. I mean, at the end of the day, isn't it about like the protocol, the the ability to have like this exchange between people? And it's like FT8. To me, like, why not give a slice of ready FT8 across all bands to all licenses, F, uh, you know, technician and beyond, uh, or technician to, to be able to do that so I can do this at nighttime or daytime? Whatever the solar conditions exactly. are, exactly. Well, and that's that's the problem is that yeah, ten meters. You know, when I got my novice, ten meters was hot, so it was good. But yeah. when it died down, yeah. Um, so, eh? so what am so I gonna we, do? We give uh, we give ten meters. That's the best HF band we give technicians, mm -hmm. and right now it's hot. Like, and it's only gonna get hotter. But it's it's such peaks and valleys. So why would you like why would you give the technician right the band that is the most affected by the solar cycle? Like it, it, then well, you're gonna it, have peaks and valleys right. of new hams. So what you should do is give them a little bit of twenty because it's kind of always okay, right? Now, but still mm. the problem the problem, and and it was already commented is that. 20 is obviously like a daytime band and you you then as a 
you know, as a contrition, you've got to give a little bit of 40 too as a nighttime band for, for technicians. I think mm. in my mind, I think so but, too. But yeah. if you just open it up for data and ready and data, then you're not going to have like, you know, people calling out CQ and, and upsetting the sad hams. You've got a structured approach with protocols and with software that allows you to go in and call out CQ and then go through the steps of making a qualified contact. I mean, I talked to Japan. I talked to Japan as a technician. I'm a technician. And, and, and I made four contacts in Japan, and I was freaking tickled to death. Right. And then I made a contact down in, in, in Ecuador. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is so freaking cool. Yep. And it just hyped my ability and my my passion for the for the hobby mm-hmm. and i'm only a month and a half into it and that's why i said you give them a slice of 20 40 and 80 just just a piece um you know mm-hmm. so they can get on this so they can participate in the contest but they want more you know that's that's that incentive say look you've mm-hmm. got this little chunk and, and if you want if you want more you upgrade it general you want more than that you know you upgrade extra well, that's why I want to upgrade to extra so I can get the rest of the, the, the 20, 40, 80 that I don't have. But but uh, given the work bands, you know, I'll bet you there'll be a ton more activity on 12, 17, uh, uh, you know, and and it just it, it, it makes no sense why we're why we we like kneecapped ourselves or, or the FCC kneecapped us when we. When we said, "Oh yeah, just ten meters. That's all you need," and then of course they can do CW on forty and eighty. Right. Well, you know. So here's so, an interesting question from Alan Beckman. He says, "Will digital modes keep people interested?" I like the personal connection of voice. So, so that's kind yeah, of the, I don't the think problem. So, so here, here's the problem, right? I think that. It's easy to get younger people, and and now I'm speaking in the younger people sense. I'm a 40-year-old guy that knows computers, right? Um, So younger people is literally like 40-year-old people and and younger. Um, we, we We can make a computer do a thing, right, and then be on the air. I don't know that there's necessarily that group of people that want to go any further than that. And I, I don't know that that's necessarily a problem, because and and let me let me let me add a little flavor to this because it, I'll be posting a video on this uh, again on this talk I did. There are a bunch of people that are my age that have families, uh, young kids, and we don't live in the world anymore where the dad kind of has like all this free time at the end of the day. I Amen. help out I help out with my kids with homework and I get them in the the car and we go do we do we take them to tennis practice and we take them to all the other things that the kids are doing. So, we don't just have all this free time to hop up on the radio and just have this elongated QSO because that's kind of what QSOs are on single side band. Even the shortest cue, so for me, I'm sitting there going like, okay, let's let's wrap this up. So I'm going to get to the next one, right? That world is is here, like that exists. Like not only are that that forty thirty five to forty five year old demographic settle down, Bruce, settle down, settle what? down, Bruce. All right, Bruce, calm down, calm down, Bruce. Not not only like is that demographic at the point where they're like, hey, I have other challenges on my time i i i've got to go do the dishes like i'm literally going to wrap up the live stream and go do my dishes because i'm you know that that's just the lifestyle i have where i'm going to commit to the to the relationship of my wife and the household and all that stuff i don't just have the free time where i'm just going to sit and talk with a bunch of guys that's just the reality of it and i don't know that the the hobby has like realized that yet I've talked about it and I did a talk where this is like one of my primary things is just to remind people that like, hey, guess what? Your ham club meeting at 7 p.m. on a Wednesday is probably not happening for the 35 to 45 year old demographic because they got kids in school and they got kids in extracurriculars. And then when they get home, they're going to be helping them do homework. They don't have time to go to the ham club. 
They're not going to get in a car and physically go to a place anymore. Like that's done now. Like COVID killed that. But even before that, we were already kind of there. Right. Well, we I'm, just I'm already this... stretched in on that stuff. You right. Know, right. Right. But that, club meetings. that that's my problem with club meetings right now is like, I don't think everybody's starting to realize like, hey, you do know that all these people have like lies and things that they have to do outside of this. Right. Like, does everybody get that? But I don't think they do. I think it's because they grew up at a different time where they had a little bit more freer space to explore well, this area. Maybe... And we don't have that anymore. Maybe it's time to redefine what they are, and uh, maybe they are is uh, something a little bit different, mm-hmm. where it's like 11.30 at night in Texas, and I'm um, talking on Discord <laughs> with a bunch of people. Well, yeah, so, so then when I say that as a reply, which is what I did, I'm like, hey, by the way, we, we have a, a world where there's an ad hoc community that you can just be in, like a Discord where we've got a, a live voice chat that you can hop in any time. And people are like, well, that's not the same thing as a ham club, which I don't disagree with them. Like, I don't disagree. But the problem is, is that when you have a ham club and you spend the first 15 to 30 minutes just going through the details the of the last of ham order. club. Right. Robert you go, of order. <laughs> yeah, you go through <laughs> the details on. of the last ham club. Everybody's like, why am I here right now? I just could be doing this sitting in my pajamas at home mm. right that, you know, that's that's I, kind I, of the I, thing right i think some clubs uh, have have moved towards having a separate business meeting and it's open so anybody who wants to go can do it or, mm-hmm. or maybe it'll be on a on a zoom session or something like that um because obviously all members of the club should be have should have access to to club meetings uh to to business meetings um, but a lot of people just want to go there, A, to socialize and mm-hmm. B, maybe to learn something new that they haven't done. And I think maybe that's what they, the focus. Yeah, be. that's it, how our club is. We, we go like we, we actually, our, our club meetings start at six o'clock and they glow, go till nine o'clock. Well, okay. Uh, from six to s- about seven, uh, it's just basically, we, we call it mentoring. And so we, we set up for like, you got a question, you come in, you sit down and, and we'll talk to you about it. The problem is that nobody does that. But what happens is we just sit around, walk around, we talk to everybody. Hey, you know, what's going on? Uh, I'm doing this. Hey, I put this antenna up. We just, you know, we talk amateur radio for an hour with, with each other in the club. And there's tons of people there. Um, and then, uh, eventually the, uh, uh, club president will stand up there and go, Hey guys, uh, we're ready to start the meeting. Everybody goes and sits down and then he proceeds to go, okay, these are the events that we have in the club that are coming up this month. And he goes over those and then we move into a one hour presentation. And then after the one hour presentation, there's more visiting and most people stay until nine o'clock. They get there around six and they stay till nine. Um, and, you know, there's a good two hours or so of just BSing with their, each other. But um, I think it makes the club really uh, a good club. And, oh, uh, yeah. and, and then it, we have we have Zoom meetings. Uh, we do the, the fox hunts every weekend. And the fox hunts are always we put the fox out uh, Saturday morning at seven o'clock. And they're out until uh, Sunday night at seven o'clock. And any time during that time, you choose when you want to, you go out and you hunt the fox. And we have four foxes out. And when you find the fox, you click on a link uh, or you you photo the the little uh, QR code. Right. And then that enters you in a contest at the end of the month or, or next month's meeting. See, that's great. And then they have a rollout. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a, uh, it's, it's just, uh, and you know, we had the, the winter field day today. We, we have just events that, you know, and some people are able to make it. Some people aren't. And the guys like you're talking about, like we had two or three of them today. They come out to winter field day. They don't bring a radio. They don't get on the radio. They just come out. They walk around. They look at everything, talk to everybody. They have their kids with them. Uh, Their kids see it. They're running around, playing around in the park, which is where we were. 
This is, and then, this is hey kids, point. let's go. We need to get we need to get you to such and such a deal. Yep. And they all and they they go and they they leave. But you know that we we gave them a, a chance. We we're sitting there set up, set up the radios. They look at the radios. Hey, that's a really neat radio. And uh, you know, so you know, yeah, it's just a that that's how our club runs. How and, how how do they do their business? Do they do business meetings like on? Yeah, a yeah, session? exactly like you said. Exactly. Okay. They yeah. they the president and the vice president and the treasurer and um the the so they're like five or six directors. They all go to somebody's house and they have a meeting and anybody can go. And, right. It's uh, not close yeah. to the members, but right. it's not because, you know, most of your members are going to be like, yeah, I don't want to go see that. That's boring. And they publish the minutes in, you know, on the website and, you know, whoever the hell wants to go read them can go read them. But who does that? Right. Right. I, I, I think, so I think Don, a lot of Don, that's, that's a good adaptation to, to the reality, I think of a ham club. And I, I, I just, I, I feel like there's so many clubs because we're hearing it, that they're kind of like, they're kind of starting to die a little bit. I think it's adaptation that's required here. And oh, we, we've grown leaps and oh, bounds. It, it sounds like, it, it sounds like they're very open to adaptation to the environment they're in, which, which is great. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I, by the way, that Fox Hunt idea sounds just perfect that is perfect. yeah i've been trying I to talk that. it up since we started doing I, it. I love it i that that sounds like the best thing you could do i i, I think just I, just fantastic i think a lot of one a lot of the problems is the the charters for the clubs themselves mm. require a quorum for certain things to be passed and and you know what i mean and there, there's like mm. all these all, all the business stuff, you know, is required by, right. by, by their rules. Yeah. And so they're bound by their, by their structure. And it's actually, um, you know, it, it's putting them in a, in a cripp yeah. crippling position because mm -hmm. they can't be flexible because yeah. it's in their rules against it, you know, that they have to be, Oh, you have to have a quorum, which is all members present to do blah, blah, blah. And, yeah, no, yeah, we don't have anything like that. I think we did at one time, but they when they changed all of that about oh ten years ago or more. But maybe, they uh, maybe some people need to come up, you know, maybe some well, people from the league need to come up with something like that to present as a way for hey, this is maybe you should look at uh, doing some sort of you know, we have with well, the biggest problem we have is dealing with the league. I was going to uh, say I don't know that the league is a solution to this problem. Well, yeah, they're they've I, I really got don't. They, they got they, weird rules too. Like if you want yeah, to be yeah. affiliated, fifty over fifty percent have to be AWR members to be. Yeah, affiliated we with AWR. we don't have problems with that. What we have problems with is that there's a certain amount of like money that the, that the uh, AWRL would kick in towards you as a club, and uh, but you have to apply for it, and the paperwork to apply for right. it is very confusing. And then when you submit it, they've changed the rules, and we have yet over the last like five or six years to ever get any of that money from the AWRL because the paperwork never gets in correctly. And we oh, have the, tried the and tried money and tried. stuff like the grants that they've had. Yeah, I, I don't think it's that it's something that you're supposed to get as a club. And, um, I, my, the, our president talks about it once in a while, but he doesn't like to talk about it because he thinks it's a, just a big crock. And so he doesn't do it, talk about it a lot. So I don't, quite understand it i just know that it's been a big problem for us and uh so yeah i don't i i'm like josh i don't think the the league is the answer I, i'm and, not saying anything against the league right now i'm no, just no, saying like, I know. That, that like i i think clubs need to find their own way and find the mm -hmm. balance in the appropriate time to do things and things have changed like things have changed we have to well, adapt and i hope clubs are willing to do that i guess is the point well, right yeah, I mean, another, but by the way, another great club, and I, I, I know we mentioned this one time when he was on, but the way that Howard runs that uh, LICW. Oh, yeah. That sure. is fantastic. Uh, it, it's the best example of an online club. Yeah, that yeah. That exists, I think. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, by, by the way, not that Matt doesn't do a good job, because again, he, I think that's a, the HRA is a great club oh, yeah. to be in, too. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, I, we've reached the uh, the end of me at least for today. I'm I'm gonna try and go, maybe hang out with the kids for a little bit before they have to go to bed because it is Saturday, so we can get away with watching a 
a show or something before. Do, do you need your homework this week? Uh, I, I, <laughs> so what was it? I, I did, I did watch Glass Onion. What was the last one? Oh, um, the, the, the Witcher series with Michelle Yeoh Yeo in it. That I have not. Okay. Cause no, it's, I, it's, yeah, I haven't, I haven't done that either. Everything everywhere. No, so oh, that no, is no, fantastic. No. Yeah. yeah. That was, I, I was the one that told everybody they needed to go watch that immediately. Um, yeah, but she's in she's in a, a a Witcher series that is not it's not the one with Henry Cavill on it. It's one that takes place years and years before, and uh, like many many hundreds of years. And they're kind of explaining, okay, this is where Witchers came from and why they exist. And it and uh, she's she's a part of that movie, and it's a good story. Number one, is it it's Hobo completely Max? in the huh? Is it HBO Max or where is it? No, no, it's on Netflix. Oh god damn it! Okay. Why did you drop your Netflix? No, not yet. But Leia's. It's on a. It's on a, a, a quickly thinning thread for Leia. Oh really? <laughs> oh. So, so Leia is all of the mindset that Prime, Amazon Prime, and HBO Max are the best things you can have. Which I, oh, I God. by and large, I agree with her. Like some of the best shows. Lord, we Lord watched. of the Rings. God. No, 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 no. no. I <laughs> we did not watch that. We did not watch that. But do you think like Peripheral, right? Peripheral yeah, that is, was is good. Prime. Uh, HBO Max has so many, like The Last of Us. Oh my gosh, are you all watching The Last of Us? That's been epic. Oh yeah, oh, I, I'm I'm afraid to. Oh, it's I, so good. It's so it's the good. Best video game adaptation yet. Vengeance it, on it, Prime. Oh wait, my who god. Said, who said it's the best video game adaptation? It is. It That's is a, so yeah. good. It is so good. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, pa pa Pedro Pascal is like. Oh my God! He's like that character. He's literally the personification <laughs> wait, of that character. Wait, wait, wait! You mean you mean yes? You mean the Mandalorian? Yes, yes, yes. yes. He's so good. Uh, it is yes. so good. Uh, I'm gonna have to check so, out and see what Drunk Three PO says about it. Okay. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. He, he's my he's my barometer. Him him and Geeks and Gamers and the rest of them. Okay, so what and, uh, is it? What's uh the the Witcher one that I'm looking for? Because I'm gonna put it on the list. Uh oh man, I is it Blood Origin? Yeah, I believe. Yeah, it is. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Oh yeah, I see. I saw Michelle Yeoh. Okay, good. I'm adding. Yeah, and it's it's only about six episodes, I think, or seven maybe. So it's not it's not long. Well, it's not so it's not going to continue on either. This is like it's a one and done. It's a one off. Yeah, I hate I hate to tip the hat to Leia, but if it has an Asian actor in it, she's way more likely to watch it so i'm gonna just mm. put it so, well so i've got michelle it yo's in it and, and, it's and, on and it's she's on. badass too oh yeah michelle yo's a badass she, michelle yo's great i love I, her i have i have another one for you okay josh okay and and i totally discovered this by my my roommate was watching it i came upstairs and i'm like or no i woke up and he was watching it and i'm like this is interesting it's got uh Got the gal, one of the gals that played Nikki in uh, Orange is the New Black. It's called Poker Face. Have you heard of that one? I have not, Ooh, but uh, Orange is the New Black nice. is one of Leia's favorite shows. Okay, so. well then, she, if she liked Nikki in Orange is the New Black, she'll is probably Netflix? love this. Uh, I, I don't know if it's on, I think it's on the Peacock one. Oh, so. I know. Isn't that, that horrible? But, Isn't but that terrible? Free. It's free, though. So. Oh, my well, God. Yeah, it, it, and uh, they've got they've dropped like the first four episodes so far, so they're 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 not dropping the whole series. I I you know I'm like oh god this is on Peacock so it's gonna suck seventy three. Um, but seventy three. Yeah. No, because somebody <laughs> said they're gonna that. head out. I saw so that. Seventy three. Yeah. Um, but this thing this is another ryan johnson thing and i as much as i oh, hate that ryan man johnson is nuts as much as it's i very hate hit him, and miss very hit and miss it's good and i mean it, it's got parts in there that i just kind of went ah rolled my eyes you know woke this and woke I, that. I, but, I will say i will say if anybody didn't catch my recommendation the the last couple of times was reacher reacher is still I gotta watch that. Oh, that's great! That. God, so that's good. My dad, my dad. Remember, my dad broke his arm. He's been staying with Who's us since favorite? after the day after Christmas. He's been staying with us. He only went home last week, which is part of the reason why my schedule's been all upside down. And I only put out like one video last week was because my dad was still with us. So 
he has read many of the Reacher books. He watched Jack Reacher, which is the one with Tom Cruise. He hated that movie. He hated it. He's like, this is not Reacher. Reacher was never like a little guy. And, and Tom Cruise is kind of a little guy, right? Obviously. And they kind of like made him right. look taller and all this stuff. So right. I was like, Dad, you read Reacher, right? And he was like, yeah, it's a good book series. He's a Tom Clancy guy. He's read all of Tom Clancy. Absolutely loves Tom Clancy. So I'm like, okay, I wa- I'm going to put this on. And I want you to I want you to tell me if this is what you think Jack Reacher should look like. And I, I started the first episode, and he's like, this man is an absolute monster of a human being. He's like, this is perfect. And he starts watching it, and all the, the like, very, like, if, if you watch the fight scenes in Reacher, they're very technically just accurate because he is just an absolute machine. So he's very efficient. He just brutalizes people with strength. And and my dad's watching and goes, this is like the best adaptation of this book series that I could have imagined. This guy is perfect. And he he's like when we're when he was staying at my house, he 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 got sick with a with a he got the flu while he was with us and then he had the broken arm and he's like, I just can we like I know I haven't gotten out of bed that much, but when I get out of bed, can we watch Reacher again? And I'm like, yes, we'll finish Reacher. So we finished the first scene, and he was like, "This is the best adaptation of a book series I've seen in a long time." And I was like, mm. "Yep, I, I cannot, I can't disagree with you. It, it's very good. Reacher is and, possible." And Reacher, the best. Reacher is on which Amazon? Uh, or? Amazon. That is on uh, Amazon. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I check this out with Leo. I think I think Leo will like it. Um. The basic premise is the way it starts off, and I've only I, I didn't catch the whole first episode, but I got the whole the rest half of it, and then they're not going to try and peacock me. Is this peacock? What is this? Yeah, Wait, what's it's the show on called? Peacock. What's it called? It's called Poker Face. And so this main character, it, the way it's done, you know how Ryan Johnson always does weird stuff, right? So you're sitting oh, there watching a show it's, like it's uh it's with what's her name? I can't. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. The one who played herself in like Glass Onion or the one before that. Yeah, the first Knives Out. She was actually in the... There's like different stars in every episode, but she's like the main character. She's like the thread that runs through the whole Natasha series. Natasha Leone. That's, that's what her. I'm thinking of. Yep. Yeah. So so basically it starts off... She, I guess she's... she can She's like a human lie detector, right? So she can tell when people are lying because she, she was in a casino and she could like, you know, tell when people were lying and that's how... It, kind of starts off and mm-hmm. she gets like blackballed from casinos because she can she can basically not cheat but she she knows everybody's tell she knows when somebody's lying mm-hmm. and um but there, and there's she so can, many shows that it's based on this premise there's so oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 I, I was trying to think of well what do you call it well it's kind of like lie to me but not yeah it's lie to me yeah yeah, yeah it's lie yeah, to me. yeah you well, know she, but she loved by the way so she'll probably like this so okay yeah okay. yeah so and, and and of course there's the these basic corrupt mob mob type guys that, no you know way. that are yeah no of course way. you know but then like there's an episode where chloe Savino, i can't remember how to pronounce her last name but the one the girl that was in big love the blonde chick from big love oh, oh she, okay she, she loves she's big playing love, like though. a washed up you know uh uh lead singer for a metal band that's that's still you know she's working at like a generic home depot lowe's type of store and you know, try to get people to go. You know, so you're saying Canadian Tire? Is what you're saying? Canadian Tire. <laughs> I don't get that. <laughs> it, it, it's called like I forget what it is. It's, it's you could tell it's supposed to be like a a dig at Home Depot or or Lowe's. You know, it's like the shelves are blue, but they're wearing orange smocks. You know? Oh, it's okay. Kind of, All right. Yeah. Any rate, but you know, but she's like, what they were famous for. They were a one hit wonder metal band. You know, and and they're trying to recapture that. And, but it basically, she goes, she just goes around and she's like solving these murders <laughs> because she can tell when people are lying and she can put two and two together and, her, and make sense out of it, you know? So it's kind of give it, give it a shot if you can. And, okay. and well, let I, me know they they've got four episodes of it. So, so again, like Michelle, Yo, uh, Michelle, oh geez, I'm losing it. Um, I'm I'm gonna go do The Witcher right now. Well, 
I'll see where where uh, she's I'll at. go watch The Witcher. I, I'm, I'm gonna I go do that. do that. Michelle Young, is that it? Michelle Yeoh. Michelle Yeo. Yeo. Why was about? I? Yeah. Okay. I was. Oh no! It was because of the other actress. I got all screwed up. But yes. Okay. Uh, anyone watch Chainsaw Man yet? No, that I that is on my personal list to watch Chainsaw Man. Uh, Covain, thank you for that. But uh, anyway, well, all right. I think I'm gonna wrap things up. Cheers to you all. Uh, three, Josh. Next yeah. week, next week is gonna be Patron Picks episode. So for all the patrons, the producers that haven't voted yet, there is a a very it's not secret. It's just at the bottom of the list that I don't think is getting voted on very much. I don't know that we want to turn it into a whole live stream, but it could happen. I don't know if you guys vote for it, it's going to happen. Um, that's all I have to say about that, but there are a lot of things on there. So hopefully we pick a winner and we'll be live next week. All right. So I think the week after, Oh, go, go ahead, Don. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, and I, I know this is like way back in the chat, but I, I posted a picture of the bag of parts that came in that or came from uh, you HF did signal. you did and actually I I posted it on the the live stream where I was looking at the comments on it so it it mm. sounds like it's both a uh, a receiver fix and also a, a transmit fix for the PA yeah yeah uh, I haven't gotten one which I would assume that I will because I had one mm -hmm. of the first so I'm probably the most vulnerable to design defects i guess so we'll, well see. well and it and i mean there's a ton of parts in here i just one of the things mm -hmm. is i thought you might could turn a live stream into putting this thing together but anyway i mean I'll uh, have to take the whole damn thing apart again <laughs> yeah i don't see any other way to put all these parts in there wow. right right but uh, anyway yeah uh, i'm not ready to tear into that radio right now so it, I mean, it's a, it's a fun radio. It, it, oh yeah, it, I, I commit it a works pie well. to it. Yeah, it does. It sounds good too. It sounds really good mm -hmm. with that with that space where speaker and everything's all in there. It, it's mm -hmm. it's probably one of my better sounding radios with that echo cavity that is the body of it. So yeah, I, I really I I I would love to take it portable sometime, but. Yeah. After we get all I, the bugs worked out, you know. I think that I think that's not a bad idea. I'm kind of with you on that. All right, I gotta I have to sort out my anyway. whole antenna issues with the Ford, but uh, well, I, right. I, I like that idea. I, I do like that. Drill, idea. baby, drill. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm not drilling. I, I've got but, the I've got the diesel mount. I I will. Uh, I'll probably. I gotta be... see this diesel mount. Oh, you know what? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't post it so you could show it next week no no i'll just do it right now. or uh fine. yeah do a do a video on it well i, I do don't worry i'll definitely your... do yeah yeah i'm sure you will yeah but anyway uh sorry for keeping you an extra few minutes but we no 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 on your homework yep 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 uh da, 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 da. what is it thanks josh and uh appreciate everything y'all do here uh from a tech ticket and uh, let's go ahead and build that tech ticket base and, and keep the hobby going. Indeed. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm pulling it up right now. Everybody holds your breath when you look at the price on this thing. Oh, Lord. Uh, so this is set up for, um, they make, <laughs> it's, it's $360 for this thing. So what that is is that bracket goes right behind the brake light on the top of the cab on F-150s. And they make a, a single NMO mount and a dual NMO mount. But it is stupid expensive. What if you so you did HF, get me. What's that? You're going to use NMO for HF? Oh, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, get an mm -hmm. adapter. Oh, I'll just... Well, I mean, no... You just buy an NMO mount. Yeah, it's Hold not. On, where is it? I oh, I, I, most of the HF antennas I've ever bought were three eighths. So, oh, the there's there's a ton of NMO mount antennas for HF, really. Mm -hmm. Oh no, not for HF. No, no, no. That's, this is that's just what I said. HF. For HF, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. Stop it! Get out of there. Uh, there we go. Okay, so I have the so they got the Maverick kit, the Ranger kit, 
uh, the Ford Raptor, Ram TRX. I'm now a truck guy, apparently, because I have a truck, so I have to do all the things. Where's Give the a F-150? quasi truck. Huh? <laughs> Sorry, nothing. I'm just no, I got a full. Well, regardless of it having a, a, a battery hear... and multiple motors in it, it is the it is the F one fifty body. Like it is did, it is the whole. Did thing. I hear you call it a a frunk or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I got a frunk, earlier? man. I got a frunk. You don't. Have I a heard frunk, you say man. that in my job. I had to. What is that? He's making up new words. No, oh, that's what Ford calls it. Yeah, the power frunk. So there you go. You you can get it in the two mount or the single mount. And I got the single, but yeah, it's, I just it, it's somebody a, stole his engine. It's a full billet aluminum. It's a little spacer that goes in between the brake and uh, the brake light on the top of that's the cab. Kind of cool. It, it's oh, it's really super expensive. cool, but it's three hundred and seventy or sixty dollars. It's insane. don't you know anybody with a CNC machine that could take a block of aluminum and make one of well, those? Well, that's what you're paying for. Is there's literally mm. a dude hogging that thing out. So I mean. I, can't I mean, really that's complain. literally what it is, right? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's literally. Aluminum that somebody yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm paying out. for billet, like billet antenna mounts, which is just, I mean, I guess that's truck life. That's what you have to deal with, right? <laughs> and then yes, they, they, what they do, anodize it? Do they oh, anodize yeah, yeah, it? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, you look for a video on that. Um, I don't know oh, when, right. but sweet, sweet. I have it. I got to just install it. My problem is that I don't have the radio yet that I'm going to put in. And I don't have the mount in the cab, and I don't have mm. how I'm going to snake it all into the 12 volt supply. But, can you like, mount it without drilling holes? Mm-hmm. That's yeah, the, that's a big I, question. I, I want to see that. I think I'm going to use a rigid, um, a rigid like gooseneck arm for the head unit, and then I'm just going to mount the the well. I'll probably I'm put talking it about I'm seat. talking about mounting the mounting that thing. Oh, that this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, How does no, no, it no. Mount to the. To it it the... goes in between the brake light assembly of the top of the cab and the frame the, of the no, cab. No, no, no drill though. No, or... it's, it's you, all pass You do. What? Two tiny holes. Yeah, no, you do. There's a plate that goes back in there you behind s- it. You drill two small holes. Son of a bitch. There you go. Drill, baby. Oh, yeah, the drill. Oh, no. The holes are, yeah, but it's it's not bad. The, the holes are behind the mount where it goes on there, and there are two small holes, and then there's like an aluminum plate that okay. you put in. It reinforces it because that way, like, if you hit a tree limb, it doesn't just rip everything off. Oh, uh, okay. All right. I can <laughs> it's like a, yeah, it gives it some extra, but it's really not bad. I was nervous, so nervous when I put mine on, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Okay. It's in, you know, you just just you just want to put some like after you drill a hole, put some like uh, some just put something on it to make sure it seals the. You don't want the like a, 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 you, not you, even epoxy or something. Yeah, drop it. Well, it's actually for, I would say if you read that B bass thing that I sent you a long time ago, it, it's got the um, Ford makes a actually well you can use Rust Oleum and. Uh, just like, or oh, you can use, um, yeah. And they actually Ford makes a can of, like you can get a canister of sealant for right. like drilling holes and stuff. And it's, I don't know. You just, you literally just brush it in there with a small brush. Like it's not, you know, or you can get like a can of like rust. They literally say rust oleum, like in the, in the bodybuilder, whatever manual. Uh, and you can just take and, and, do it with like a little brush get like a it's not you just you just want to paint something on it just to okay. make sure it and that and that's but the, it's that, sealed that's around it anyway so it's not like it's going to be exposed to so the th- elements, this is but. dropping the headliner right you drop the headliner to do it no no this is all on the outside you you don't uh, the, the the whole basically you take your brake you take your brake uh light off mm-hmm. and then it gives you a like a there's a template uh, or actually, you just set up one there and mark the hole. Um, and then there's just two holes, and then the bolts go through the bracket, uh, th- you know, through the – Like a plate of the slide in the hole where the light goes yeah, in? Yeah. So, like, imagine you have, like, a large cavity back there for wiring and whatnot. Right. So when you take that light off, 
you you basically you're you're just making those two small holes and then you slide that little metal bracket around and it threads into that metal bracket and it just sandwiches it right to just give it some. so yep. all that you're doing that from like standing in the bed of the truck yeah you do your holes there right but so isn't there a backing plate that goes in the cab no, it, no, the, saying, the backing plate goes, in, goes in from the outside. It just it just slides around through like the holes where like all the wiring and stuff goes. Okay, I have to open this thing up. But then when you fed the yeah, the coax, in, did you'll... you drop the 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 head the headline? Oh yeah. Well, actually, well, in my situation, I went down the C pillar on the driver's side uh-huh. because I mounted my radio body for my fifty one hundred under my driver's seat. That's what I'm planning on doing. Okay, all right. And so I we're, ran. We're, there we're, is a generous amount of room under the uh, scuff plate to run cable through. Did you go down to the the foot plate and then come up, or did you go across the top? No, I went. No, because I mounted my radio body under my seat. Yeah, that's so what I'm I ran on down doing. the driver's side. Yeah, I'd ran down underneath the driver's side scuff plate up, and then came up the under the B pillar over to under the seat. Right, and okay. that's hold, hold, on, hold on. So we're starting at the brake light of the cab, right? Yep. So we got coax, so, and then you so, fed the yep. coax to the left towards the, to the left <laughs> towards the driver's side. Draw the driver's side, and then so you. Yep. Well, how did you fish the y, the coax through the headliner? You have some. You have some room to kind of see. You'll you'll see once you get it open and you get the that pillar off. It you really don't have to. I didn't actually drop my headliner down. Oh, so did you use fish tape or you just kind of pushed it? I think I use I I used a I'm pretty sure I used a piece of just like scrap like just copper wire. Oh, okay. So something semi rigid. Yeah, it's just like, just it's, it's very it. short. Uh huh. I mean, think about the distance from there. Oh yeah, over no, it's really short. Yeah, yeah, no, I get, it. I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Um, you know, so, so you just was, you just kind of snake something over back to the back headlight, hooked up the coax, and dragged it through. Yeah, pretty much. And then because <laughs> after that. When like when you, after you take the um, the C pillar after you take the C pillar cover off, right. it's just you you have that whole corner of headliner like edge is exposed, so you're just running it down there at that point. C pillar is all the way to the, the back trunk. behind the passenger rear side, or is it the middle pillar? The C pillar is the very back one. The very back. Okay, so I see. Yeah, the very back straight, one, and then B pillar, and then A pillar is the one Got like it. you hit your head on an accident, <laughs> Got it. or or you won't want so to. So you went you but, went straight across, come down over the kick plate, straight to the radio. Yes. Okay. All right. See, that's yeah, that's actually, totally doable. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I came get out it. underneath the C pillar and huh? just kind of went straight across. You can sort of see a little bit of wire, but it's just like fairly, um, just you know, like an inch of it to where it goes up under the seat. So that's, but the, um, that's probably my first installation is, is the 5,100. I'm, I'm yeah. guessing, uh, I'll, just off I of know this whole thing. Expensive. Normally I wouldn't buy something like that. Cause my wife wouldn't let me, but it is, it, it was worth it. Oh, dude, I love it's it. Really expensive. This is insane. It's, this know, is the most it, I've ever, like there are, oh, th- this is a stupid amount of money to pay for an antenna mount. This yeah. is crazy. This is crazy. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not even sure why. So, like, I only knew about them because, like, we were buying, like, diesel parts from this company. And I was on there. I was like, when did they start making antenna mounts? So yeah, it's I, crazy. Like, and That's I traded, super expensive. That's I so traded expensive. my Mustang in on a lower trim level truck and got money back because of the weird car market. And so part of that, I used the money I got back, the difference, to buy the 5100 and that. Oh, we lost you. No, oh. so I I use the money that I use the money I got back from like some of the money I got the difference in like the truck and the car. I used some of that to buy the antenna mount and an ID fifty one hundred for the truck. Oh. So it it worked out. So that's otherwise I probably wouldn't have got that. But I I just I look the Larson makes one that's like a plate that goes in between there and it goes up over the roof and then it's like. You can use it for mag mounts and stuff, and it's got like a hole up under the center of the back where you can feed a wire through. I thought about that, 
but I, I just didn't like it. And I just, I don't know. I had a hard time not buying that mount because it was just so clean. No, I, 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 I did. I paid the money. I, I, now that I think about it, I probably should have bought the double mount, but I went with the single. So we're just going to rock that. Um, I, there'll be a video. There'll be a video. Here you go. Blah, blah, blah. There's a video. And I'll walk through that whole, what we just talked about. I'll walk through that whole thing. So you guys can follow with that said, I, um, it's it's kind of dumb, but like a truck is literally supposed to be designed to make all this stuff really easy because that's what they're designed to do. And there's literally ports, all of it. And uh, by the way, AC4AG, thank you for all the posts you sent me. Those those Ford like exploded diagrams on the bed and the cab and all that stuff. Like it, it's insane how many ports there are that I can I can use. So. The HF side of the house, that's the one where I need to take a little bit more work. I'm I'm more confident on this now than ever from just this talk. So uh, look forward to that at least because that radio shows up, I think, next week. And I'll start uh I'll start making it happen. Cause I need to get I need to get a radio in there uh, ASAP. And if it starts out being VHF, UHF, I'm fine with that. So all right. <laughs> I'm gonna r I've gotta go. I gotta go. So you guys uh Thank you so much for watching. I, I really do appreciate it on the Discord. Uh, anything anybody needs to say before I head out, go for it. Well, have a good week, Josh. Well, you too. And everybody, uh, please, even, even if it's just an hour, challenge yourself to do something for Winter Field Day. I'm, I'm not convinced that I won't just set up a radio tomorrow in, in the backyard and just have a little bit of fun. But there you go. Everybody get out there. I, I was already out for three hours this afternoon. Good so. for you. Good for you. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna have Michael Colley from Hamvention on Ham Nation next week. So make sure you tune in next Wednesday because it's literally like the week before Hamvention or sorry Hamcation, and uh, should be a lot of fun. So seventy three everybody on the Discord, take it easy. All right, have a good one. All right, and out on the YouTube side and the Twitch side and everything else, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you hanging out for this after chat. We'll be back again next week, but there's Hamvention, or I'm sorry, what am I, God, Ham Nation next week, along with, uh, I literally have the video for the Pico APRS that's going to drop next week. Uh, I've got a couple of other things that are sitting right next to me that I'm not going to talk about yet, but they'll come out in video form real soon. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you later. 73. Enjoy the music. Again, 14313. You know what I'm talking about. The man on 20 meters. Uh, Dan, N7XQA, did I get to Quartz Fest? I did not. My work was just too difficult this week. I had too much going on. It's really tough. Uh, the first month back to work after the break is just really, really difficult to do anything. I mean, I always say next year is going to be the year for him uh, or for Quartz Fest. Take it easy, everybody. See you.